the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. In all your knowing, in all your understanding, no matter your business acumen, no matter your educational qualification, no matter your level of spirituality, if you do not understand God's system of relationships, then you stand a chance to being a failure and a frustrated personality. I've taught us here that the easiest way to succeed in life is through relationships. Your relationship is a stream of income. Your relationship, greater than any invention, the only thing that validates invention is because men are there to appreciate and reward it. This is the world of men. You have to understand men. I watch with shock and wonder how we get whipped over issues that should give us cheap victories because we ignore the systems of God. The easiest way to succeed in life is through relationships. I told us that relationships are currencies. They can purchase anything money can buy. There are seven currencies we use to purchase realities in this realm. That's the lowest and the seventh of them is money, financial resources. There are many other currencies that are used. Integrity is currency. Godliness is currency. The anointing is currency. Relationship is currency. Anything money can buy, relationship can pay for it. Anything. The only thing that gives value money or money value is that there is a hand to collect it and reward you. One person can open a hundred doors of opportunity for you. Sometimes we really don't need so many people in our lives in terms of favor and open doors. You just need one person sent by God and will open a door. I've taught us that who likes you can make all the difference in your success. God has trained us to understand that we do not ignore men and prosper. You exalt God above men, but you ignore men every prophecy will remain barren in the realm of the spirit even god had to look for men to cooperate with him and he still does till today so who likes you can make a difference a king loved a village girl and she became a queen a king hated a queen and she lost her place god so loved men and they became redeemed it matters who likes you everything reproduces on the basis of relationship everything everything in life your success your failure your spirituality everything in life reproduces adam where are thy i heard your voice but i hid because i was naked what relationship entered between us to make for that who told you it didn't say what happened who told you your neglecting my laws have been because another individual another personality was introduced everything reproduces on the basis of relationships your resources in life your finances your access will always come out of relationships your resources will always come out of relationships I'm just reading with you what I, as a preamble, favor is who God has made to like you and their willingness 
to communicate benevolence to you favor is who god has made to like you it's amazing how your life can change when the right people like you it's true the bible is full of heathenistic kings who fell in love with certain individuals like pharaoh to joseph and all of a sudden their lives changed like daniel in babylon two men had this a similar dream and for one person it meant the favor of the king he was restored as the wine presser for another person it was death and they hung him and the birds of the air ate him up but i've taught us again that relationships don't maintain themselves this is the most important part of my conversation relationships don't maintain themselves the parties involved must commit to maintaining it any kind it doesn't just have to be love relationships marriage or this no no any kind business relationships your relationship between you and the holy spirit your relationship between you and your friends you and parents love relationships marriages business career relationships no relationship maintains itself the parties involved doesn't matter how many they must commit to maintaining it and the holy spirit stirred in my heart to teach us a dimension today of relationships that i think will really really bless us there are not many times when i stand and i tell you that a teaching will bless you if tonight's teaching does not bless you something is really wrong with your understanding hallelujah i title what i'm about to share what is love understanding relationships what is love this this is not about um love relationships necessarily at all this is more serious than that it's a subject that god has is something that god has revealed to me that i think the body of christ needs to understand what is love jeremiah chapter 31 i love i love verse 3 i love your presence i love i love i love your presence i love i love i love you jesus It says the lord had appeared of old unto me saying please read with me yea i have loved thee with an everlasting love therefore with loving kindness have i drawn you this is god speaking i have loved you with an everlasting love the basis of my relating with you is love it took my loving kindness to draw you to myself to receive of my benevolence now it is this love that we want to consider what is love john chapter 3 verse 16 very popular scripture many of us have not read it for a long time because of our pride of believing we know what it says john 3 16 for god read the first the third and the fourth word one to read so loved so loved that's the key word forget about what he did later on the foundation for anything that was done so loved i have loved you with an everlasting love and in my loving kindness i have drawn you to myself and the bible says for god so loved the world whatever he did is a subject of another day the most important thing you can say he gave his only begotten son 
because he so loved the world are you seeing that now the foundation for his benevolence and his sacrifice was the extent of his love love is a word that is used greatly in our world today and in our society we attach it to our affection our affinity for things you hear people say i love you i love my car i love my boss i love my wife i love my husband i love my children i love jesus i love koinonia is that true and so we it's a word it's not a word that is new or strange even foreign even little children will tell you they have an idea we have always associated love with something that is positive but i just want to help us because knowing this will turn every aspect of our lives around not just relationships finances our work with the holy spirit and so on and so forth is a word that in many respects is carelessly used many people do not understand the gravity of what they are saying i love you or i love your shirt i love this phone i love this book i love jesus christ i love my wife my husband i love my father and for many of us and i think largely our society um societally speaking we are victims of this every time we mention the word love usually the scope of our understanding please listen the scope of our understanding is hinged around the emotions or attachment we use the word love from a layman's perspective many people just use it to explain the goodness the positive attachment is that true that they have towards a person or towards a thing so for many people the scope of love is just emotions or a word we have invented to explain it feelings feelings so when you feel good about a thing or a person and you are asked to articulate what is happening to you you say i love that thing i love this flower why you say because it is beautiful the design made it pleasant to my eyes and then i have a positive affinity towards it and i call it love but you see i want to share with us a number of things that will help us ready number one true love is not emotions true love is not emotions it's not feelings now don't get me wrong there is an emotional component when you are talking about love there has to be an emotional component but love is not emotion if the entire scope of your definition of love for a person or for a thing is just an attempt to express the emotional affinity towards that thing then you are very limited please listen there is a lot of trouble in marriages in relationships in carnality attachment to things because of this one definition feelings the word feeling is a very is a psychological word it's a word that was invented to explain your psychological disposition at a given time it's called feelings an expression of your psychological disposition so if i i am not feeling all right because of a for instance a stomach upset you ask me what's wrong and i tell you i'm feeling sick is that true if someone annoys me and i am not happy you ask me what was wrong with you i say i'm feeling bad so the word feeling is a word that attempts to describe your psychological disposition at a given time is god helping us tonight please make sure you are listening everywhere online outside because one of the biggest unbecomings of people is their vulnerability to feelings for when you become a victim of feelings both your relationship with god and your relationship with life 
will be shattered because you see feelings listen love is not a feeling love is not emotion love can and should create feelings true love should create feelings don't get me wrong true love should create emotions we'll discuss that later without without emotions and without feelings you cannot be committed towards a person or a project i preach and we run this ministry and do what god is doing because much more than an instruction from god i'm emotionally connected to what i'm doing and therein lies my passion for the work i'm doing without feeling without emotion there is no basis for being passionate but love is not feeling are we together love can create feelings but it's not feelings we know from life and biology that feelings can be products of chemical reactions hormones feelings can be products of whatever it is all kinds of um, physiological things that happen within a human being that is the reason why love that is based on feelings should not be trusted is that true when you build your love life based on emotions and feelings you will never be able to sustain that's why many people do not have the strength to push a business idea to the end they say they love it because the idea reflected a positive emotion to them is that true and so they believe that they love the idea but then when another idea came to them higher and better than that one all of a sudden their loyalty to that idea went and it is easier for it to be a thing it is terrible when it becomes a person is that true we live in a world where our definitions of love are based on feelings so when you feel good about a person you say i love that person and for many of us now i say this with honor we have watched films we have been exposed to books and we have even been mentored by personalities who have been so inclined to emotions and the entire scope of their definition of love is that it must always give you a feeling a positive feeling and if for any reason the feeling is not positive then it is not love that is not an accurate teaching is God helping us so if I say come I love David Dam what for many of us are saying uh, what we are trying to say is that my sight of david it doesn't matter what parameters i put together to arrive at my idea of love what i'm attempting to say is that the presence of david dam creates a positive emotional um experience for me is that true and then i can be fooled into thinking that just because at the moment i felt positive about him i love him then tomorrow i now see another side of david dam that communicates an experience that does not go well with my idea of happiness is that true and all of a sudden i change my mind and say david dam i no longer love you remember that's what you did to the shirt you now throw in your house see how much you loved it when you bought it beautiful shirt my god and you wore it and you were happy something about that shirt made you feel happy and excited and you used the wrong word you called it love and now because the shirt began to fade or tear it started falling your hand and you no longer were confident about it because it no longer created that disposition confess right now what did you do to the shirt isn't it amazing how your attitude towards that shirt has changed you look at it in your wardrobe and have no pity for that shirt think of how much you were bargaining just a few months ago please reduce 1000 reduce 5000 and this is the shirt now but you said you loved the shirt 
Remember when you dried it and for whatever reason you didn't find it. You search, who took my shirt? But now the shirt is right there. Love. What exactly is love? Feelings are always based, I wrote something here. Feelings are temporary dispositions based on something we consider pleasant. Feelings, write it down. Feelings are temporary dispositions based on something we consider pleasant about someone or an object. So if David Dam sings, watch this. I give David Dam a mic and he has a beautiful voice. Now when he raises that voice, his flawlessness, his vocal discipline, his artistry, the ability to coordinate himself musically sounds pleasant to me. That gives me a basis for feeling right about David Dam. Is that correct? And now I may be tempted to call that feeling love. It remains love for as long as David Dam is singing. What if he's sleeping? What is the name of the experience? The difference between singing and snoring, they all make sounds. One is coordinated one is not so this, they are all coming out from the same person that's the interesting thing all coming out from the same personality now one is coordinated please understand what i'm teaching you and then it is pleasant to you and he becomes likable all of a sudden you are drawn emotionally based on something now most of us may not admit that that's what is drawing us is that true and then the person now snores for instance and then that experience does not go well with your disposition and you begin to lose that fervor our world is in danger of losing it if we do not understand what love is i foresee that if we do not know what love is many marriages will break many relationships will not even exist many businesses will never grow to be big enough many ministries many leaders will not be able to rise because of this mistake of feelings building anything on just feelings and emotion is a guarantee for failure and frustration please hear what i'm saying building anything at all just based on feelings and emotion is a guarantee for failure and frustration when you build a business on feeling when you build a relationship on feeling when you build marriage on feeling when you build your work with god on feeling when you build your spiritual growth process on feeling that's what makes a lot of believers start feeling bad I used to feel the presence of God in a way when I'm about to climb the stage I feel that thing when I feel it I know God is there and right now I'm about to pray for sick people and I don't seem to feel it and they believe God is not there with me because we have been trained we don't ignore feelings but feeling is not love feeling has brought a lot of people into trouble there are marriages that are in trouble today because of the mistake of feeling listen carefully there are relationships today that are in shambles because of feeling there are businesses there are careers there are people today who are in geographic regions that they should never be ask them what happened they say i felt so there are people who should never be close to certain personalities there are people who should never be involved in certain businesses it's like an emotional rampage feelings they drive us up and down and so we begin to vacillate based on whatever disposition we have at the moment when a revelation sounds good to you ah uh, this is wonderful and then you love the revelation so you say then the day you understand the gravity of that revelation and it does not go well with you you throw it away love is not feelings Is God helping us? 
there are many things in life that have capacity please look up there are many things in life that have capacity of creating positive emotional experiences for us looks can create that you know that when you see a, a guy or a lady or whatever individual or a thing once it is good looking it can create a positive experience for you education when you see someone who is well learned someone who has been able to acquire certifications of all kinds they have a way of creating a positive disposition is that true um appearance when you see someone looking sharp and looking nice beautiful and handsome when i stepped in and i saw i worshiped him they were all looking gorgeous wonderful people right from outside i saw our ushers too they were looking beautiful i had a positive disposition towards them are you following me now orientation when you see someone who is exposed vast intelligent he has a great command of his intellect well developed understanding about several aspects of life and the person has an opportunity to articulate his understanding before you naturally naturally you will be drawn towards the person there are other things like wealth finances finances have the capability of creating pleasant experiences why because they are able to be exchanged for a solution you desire you can exchange money for a solution that you desire could be medically could be spiritually you can use money to buy a bible you can use money to move from being a tenant to a landlord it can give you a lot of options godliness and spirituality when you find out that someone has a very high level of understanding with god that disposition can cause pleasantness but none of those things in themselves equates to love is god helping us because you see many of our marriages many of our relationships many of our businesses are hinged on physical things that were pointed out and used as references to mean what we call today love so when you meet the gentleman and say why do you love this lady he says because she's beautiful or because she has character or because she did whatever it is why do you love this gentleman he said he's responsible he loves god doesn't run around he's well cultured and he's visionary those things look very sincere and they are but that's not love are we together why do you love this intelligent entrepreneur oh this guy is very sharp his business acumen is sound the result he has has to show for it why do you love this course you are studying i love it because i was told there is an opportunity there i love it because my father tried to study it and it didn't work now you think that those things mean love they are positive don't get me wrong but they are wrong foundations for love because if your foundation is based on those things there will be serious trouble how many of you have seen an old man and an old woman maybe the old woman maybe 65 to 70 years and her old husband is wrinkled sitting on a wheelchair and you see them hold their hands and say we love ourselves talk to me intelligent people we feel emotionally drawn to ourselves is that what you believe they are saying it couldn't be we make a fool of ourselves because of the impulsive nature of our lives which has been a derivative of our idea about love that every time i have a positive disposition towards a thing or a person then i love the thing or the person and whenever that positive feeling is not there we now say i do not love the person that's not god's idea that's not the definition of love hallelujah mm. the bible says those that god loves he chastises how do you how do you equate chastening with love
impulsive marriages impulsive businesses impulsive relationships impulsive career pathways and all these mood swings that come in life are products of dependence on feelings to make destiny decisions there are people i remember talking to a lady one or was it a gentleman one day and he came and met me he said i want to read a course i said why he said because i like the name that's exactly what we're talking about are we together chemical engineering <laughs> architecture neurosurgeon aeronautic engineer you know so the name is, is is charismatic and we do not understand the gravity of what is involved and we subscribe for things that we start regretting from day one is that true many people have been whipped by the sad reality that they were not ready for what they subscribed for this happens in relationships it happens in businesses listen if you listen to what i'm teaching you tonight i promise you you will walk out here happy and you will live happy as far as relationships are concerned feelings can be deceptive and are not an accurate measure of love write it down feelings can be deceptive feelings all kinds feelings can be deceptive and are not an accurate measure of love ask any married man and married woman ask any mother and her children ask every father and the children ask any leader and his subordinates they will tell you that if you depend on feelings as an index to measure love you will be deceived many times there are times that you are having the greatest manifestation of the presence of god in your life and you will not feel nothing but at those times your relationship and work with god are to incredible proportions but because you have programmed yourself into believing that because you felt his presence and he shook your body that meant you were receiving an impartation how many people walk out of miracle services angry because they did not have a feeling they expected to fall down is the noise maker who was sitting close to them that was not even prepared in his spirit who was falling up and down and they go back feeling pained and disappointed and say lord you mean you watch me like this fasting i didn't even break and this guy who was gossiping and making noise from praise and worship he was already on the ground we convinced ourselves that because there was no feeling that accompanied your experience that your senses could relate with you didn't receive anything it's the reason why many people don't get filled with the holy spirit because they are waiting for feelings feelings can be deceptive and are not an accurate measure of love are feelings wrong no are emotions wrong no but our society many of you seated today looking at me are depending on a feeling to show you your wife you are depending on a feeling to show you your husband you are depending on a feeling to love your wife if you're married or a feeling to love your husband you are depending on a feeling to serve god you are depending on a feeling to believe that you are loved in your department you are be, you are depending on a feeling feelings are deceptive very deceptive before i tell you what love is i want to show you a scripture that blessed me dimensions of true love let's discuss that ephesians chapter 3 please from verse 17 and 18 it's amazing how paul gives us his exegesis on the subject of love very strange communication that came from Paul and let's see what he's saying Paul said that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith look at me listen that ye being rooted and grounded in love now Paul is confusing us here Paul is giving us an idea 
you know is using agricultural terminologies but this is not where i'm going verse 18 it says may be able to comprehend with all the saints read on with me what is the number one the breath number two the length number three the depth number four the height so love has these dimensions there is breath there is length there is depth there is height have you experienced these dimensions in your definition of what you call love if i ask you what is the breath of love and when should it be used because it's in the bible if i ask you what is the length of love and when should it be used because all these dimensions have their relevance remember he's teaching us to grow in the fullness of god who is love and he's fragmenting this dimensionally and he's saying that love has breadth and length and depth and height which one of the four do you know when you say love which of them do you refer to my brother when you say i love that lady which of this is it the breath the length the depth when you say i love jesus which of them because paul is saying if that thing you are doing or know is love it must have breath listen carefully it must have length it must have depth thank you media it must have height believers lovers remember we love god and love ourselves what is the name of what we have been doing with respect to this i love you i love my car and paul says that thing you are talking there are dimensions the first dimension write it down i want to give you the four dimensions the lord revealed this to me and it changed my life it really did if these four dimensions are not captured in your idea of love then never talk about it these four dimensions i'm about to describe for you if they are not captured all four must be captured for it to be called love three over four in this equation is still f it must be four over four to be called god's idea the dimensions of love ready number one passion the first dimension of love is passion there is no love if it cannot be expressed in passion that's why i told you that there is a place for feelings it's only that feelings is not the entire scope please follow me in this teaching god is going to be revealing to many of us the mistakes we have been making whether in love relationships even in marriages and our work with god and businesses and relationship among believers around passion what is passion a strong or extravagant fondness of something when you are strongly fond of something it can be said you are passionate about that person or that thing what is passion sorry i'll hurry up you can get the teachings enthusiasm or desire for someone or something your passion for a person or a thing is measured by your enthusiasm your desire for something you cannot say you love a person or you love a thing and intrinsically there is no desire passion is called an intense enthusiasm compelling desire even admiration qualifies to be called passion write this down the proof that you are passionate about a person or a thing is pursuit 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 is the proof of passion when you love someone and you love something you are willing to be vulnerable enough 
pursue that personality to pursue that idea there cannot be passion when there is an ashamedness for pursuit towards God towards men there are many relationships and many marriages many business ideas that do not have passion attached so the individuals they may say that they love this um, line of business but I do not see pursuit they may say I love this lady I love this guy but there is no desire for pursuit many say I love Jesus I love the things of God but there is no pursuit the first dimension of love that must be at work in your life is pursuit Psalm 8 please quickly let's look at God himself demonstrating this dimension of love Psalm 8 and verse 3 this is the psalmist in shock and awe as to why the God of the heavens with all the dexterity of heaven will still look down at man remember the Bible said for God so loved the world I have loved you we are not studying love from any relationship expert. We are studying love directly from the one who invented it himself. Because many people have carved out, I have great honor and respect for people, authorities that God has used in the area of love and relationship, but there is a deception that is destroying the body of Christ. Every angry person comes up with a book and any idea of what they believe and begin to mentor young guys and young ladies and we are destroying marriage visions dreams relationships because of wrong templates that have been communicated so let's go to God how did God express passion this is what the psalmist saw that made him wonder he said God is it that you cannot do without man you threw your pride on the ground your throne is not enough for you you look at a man that is so godless and doesn't love you he said when i consider the heavens do you know what he's saying lord you are not dull you made the heavens without pillars the works of your fingers can't you invent another thing to replace that man the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained verse 4 we're reading to verse 5 what is man that thou art change mindful to passionate ready what is man that thou art passionate not the son of man that you prove you are passionate by doing what visiting him you leave your throne you are not even considering whether people will say how about god you are too big for this childishness he said no problem say whatever you say about me i am in love with that man and the first dimension is my passion i am not ashamed let's go back to our world of proud and arrogant people where a guy claims he loves a lady but he is still protecting his vulnerability you are not passionate you are not in love where somebody claims he loves a business he loves his idea i love this i love that i am a businessman and you are not serious i don't see you wake up in the night to read any book i don't see you go for any seminar you are not passionate you do not love it the first dimension of love is measured by your passion and your passion measured by your willingness to pursue without being embarrassed anything that shame will not let you pursue don't even start shame and love doesn't go hand in hand no matter who you are in the world of God's idea of love you must be willing to throw shame down to pursue a person an idea or pursue God when we were sitting here and the worship team were praising I saw a Jimmy got up and he was dancing unashamedly is a proof of passion is that true listen be careful whenever someone says he loves you or she loves you or you think you love someone before you make a shipwreck of your life because of ignorance ask yourself question number one 
am I willing to be vulnerable enough to pursue I have loved you with an everlasting love and my everlasting love was demonstrated by my being mindful Lord there are many things to distract you in heaven the beauty of heaven the throne room the four and twenty elders and after he watches that orchestra in heaven all of a sudden they find God thinking and the elders can wonder God what again and he says man sin two here is the stubborn and careless man roaming around trying to make a, a an image and bow to him and the angel said judge now judge god you are wise and he says no i'm not ashamed that as great as i am god is a weak point man has gotten this is god listen don't ever marry anybody who doesn't have this thing i'm telling you big manism and passion cannot go hand in hand show me what wakes you in the night and i know whether that idea is worth your love what wakes you up you snore by 10 and wake up by 11 say i'm an entrepreneur it's not for you it's very clear that you don't have passion for that thing you can try other aspects of life lord i love you and you are praying and then fall asleep and sleep for 10 hours no when you are mindful of anything there is passion there is God helping us tonight learn this this is the spirit of wisdom speaking to you we use words carelessly and do not understand the gravity of what we are saying Lord I love you he says which dimension is that dimension number one I love you I am passionate towards you I am not ashamed of my vulnerability oh david showed us what passion was he danced before god and the wife said uh uh oh king again were you not trained well david said god that took me from the backside i should not dance before him god had it and god said you dare not stop anyone who is passionate about me number two what is the second dimension of love commitment write it down the second dimension of love there is no love i've not defined love oh. we are just describing the dimensions love is commitment everybody shout commitment, commitment. do you know what commitment is commitment is the willingness to give your time the willingness to give your energy the willingness to give yourself to something or someone you believe in is called commitment the willingness to give your time the willingness to give yourself passion talks of pursuit the unashamedness to remain mindful of a thing but commitment talks of the staying power brothers and sisters there is no emotion to commitment commitment is a product of your belief in a thing staying power based on the fact that you believe so you can see a believer being persecuted and they are going to set fire on him and he's willing lord i remain with you denounce jesus christ or die is is there any pleasure there no sir listen to me commitment is a state or quality of being dedicated another synonym for commitment is dedication i know how committed you are to a person or a thing by dedication i wrote a definition that when i finished writing i finished writing it i just leaned my head and i took a deep breath and i said god this is serious hear this the third definition of commitment is an engagement or obligation that restricts freedom of action hi you must write everything let me say it again an engagement or obligation to someone or something that restricts freedom of action look at this kind of dangerous definition so there is a restriction that commitment can create to your life 
Mm. The love of God constrains. Constrains. There are actions that are restricted because of commitment. You have options you can sleep. You have options you can travel. You have options you can go for vacation. But your commitment for your vision because you believe that if you're committed to that vision, your children will eat from it. So you stay. And they look at you and say, Ah, ah David, damn, what is this that you are playing the keyboard? 2 a.m. 2 a.m. You are tired, you say it's true. It's obvious your eyes are teary. But something else has obsessed you more than the discomfort you are having. Commitment. There are many believers who are not committed to anything. There are many young people who are not committed to anything and anyone. We run away from commitment. I'm a member of Koinonia, but I don't want to join any workforce. That's how I am. Do you know why? Because the restriction that commitment brings is what we are afraid of. Restriction. Is God blessing us? Number three, let's hurry up. The third dimension to love. When we get to the fourth dimension, you give us that scripture again in Ephesians. The third dimension to love is pleasure. Write it down. If you must manifest true love, it must be captured. This dimension, pleasure. What is pleasure? Delight, gratification. There must be delight. There must be space for gratification. What is pleasure? The satisfaction derived from what is to one's liking. It cannot be a war of pain and regrets and fighting and pursuit indefinitely. No. There is a dimension to love that is defined by pleasure. Psalm 16 verse 11. Let me tell you something that is very interesting about love personified. Here's what the Bible says. 16 verse 11 Psalms. Are we there? It says, Thou will show me the path of life. Ready? In your presence is what? Fullness of joy. And then he did say in the hand of a 24 elder, at your right hand are what? For how long? If your definition of love is all about pain and fight and it there is no capture of the dimension of pleasure then you are not defining love based on God's terms is God speaking to us yes whether it is a love relationship whether it is a business relationship I should come and see you working on a difficult project with a smile on your face and I should say ah, ah, but I'm aware this thing is hard you mean you have to count these things one by one and there are five thousand of them and you say even me i don't know why this thing gives me joy my brother continue that's a sign that there is love there there are many things we do and we are angry and frowning at it relationships career even work with god brothers and sisters do we not rejoice after we love god we celebrate miracles here in his presence he makes sure that the dimension of delight is featured in our serving him is delight and pleasure featured in your idea of relationship there are husbands and wives there are people in relationships where there is completely no joy and laughter and delight at all there may be passion there may be commitment but there's no delight no jokes no laughter especially for we who are very visionary people it's a side effect that comes with being visionary sometimes we can strangle every iota of pleasure from our lives i have found myself many times being unfair even to myself in this regard because of the enormous responsibilities that i have over my life and over people i'm always thinking but the Bible says even God laughs from his throne. Are we together? 
the bible says laughter do it good like medicine pleasure must be captured there are times that i've been involved in ideas involved in things and i've enjoyed the beauty and the joy of triumph your business should make you laugh one day your pursuit of the anointing should make you laugh one day if you continue being angry indefinitely it can be a voice that this thing is not for you there must be a time of laughter your relationship must give you laughter one day no sir from january last year till january this year you have been meeting with the lady or the guy no laughter no feeling of relaxation and happiness what what's what sort of a, a... <laughs> i'm not i'm not i'm trying to be very careful so i don't dabble directly into relationship issues are you deriving satisfaction from your pursuit now let me tell you something if there is no pleasure in what you are loving you will feel cheated if there is no pleasure if i sit down and i'm doing ministry as god has anointed me to i there are pleasurable moments in ministry people sow into my life people bless me i have the privilege of enjoying honor you all love me and respect me so much and i'm deeply grateful for that those are the fringe benefits is the pleasure dimension of love i love god with all my heart i've seen his favor upon my life i've seen him shower me with blessings that if he never blesses me again i am deeply grateful there must be pleasure captured in your idea of love this is a challenge to visionary people this is a challenge to spiritual ladies hello spirituality is not an insult but we have found ourselves victims there are sisters that are spiritual they love god they don't know the inconvenience they are creating they strangle this third dimension of love intentionally as proof they feel so ashamed when there is an atmosphere of relaxation there are believers that frown at dinners there are believers that frown at any opportunity to relax and do this no no don't do this there are more important things they say is wrong there are fathers that will not allow this incorporated in their family there are mothers that will not allow this incorporated oh we just feel like getting two chickens just to cut no occasion see that's why it's part of my reservation about things like valentine because they are not exactly sincere most of the things that are done around this period are just emotions they are not revelations so someone that had no there's no iota of being nice suddenly changes for two days or four days that experience should not be desired because it will not continue am, am i against valentine no no do your thing but i'm just telling you that this is the revelation there is a pleasure dimension to life that's the reason why i came to serve god i came to preach in koinonia i didn't come to drink water however they know that there is a dimension of love that must be captured and they kept me a bottle of water how grateful i am for this hallelujah there are believers who don't know what the bible calls the joy of salvation say it after me the joy of salvation brothers and sisters there is joy in salvation if that experience has not been featured in your life vet what you did that you called born again or vet the atmosphere you are submitting your spiritual understanding to i detest a life that is just full of passion and commitment and then pleasure is not captured how about schools that flood children alone there's no opportunity they are either reading or serving punishment that's how many of us were raised that's how many of us were raised our families did not have provision you are sleeping you are praying you are reading or you are walking break time they give you 10 minutes now it looks like it's a nice thing but it's destructive 
go and ask the most productive people and corporations they create scenarios and force the people to have times when their minds can relax is God helping us capture this capture this they met Jesus with little children as visionary as he is and then the serious disciples say Abba Jesus you are soon to die remember all of this this and Jesus mm, please carry your let the little children come to me and do not forbid them for such most adults will say these are children please Jesus let's focus on what matters Jesus said I don't know what you are talking about there was a time they saw him with prostitutes and people he was not preaching he was eating with them cracking jokes and laughing if this is not featured in our lives somewhere we are missing it men of God listen to me spiritual brothers and sisters listen to me your service and your spirituality should not strangle the trouble becomes when your entire life is defined by pleasure your whole life revolves around the impulses of pleasure you are back to the feelings we are talking about I was told the other day that the worship team went for an aerobic session. I was so blessed. You would think all they do is to pray. There was a time I think the prayer department were having, was it a seminar or something like that? And that's why after service, you should not stop people from those brief moments where they are, ah, how are you? That's why we crack jokes in the middle of the service. Even if it's a miracle service, doesn't matter whose problem. You have your medical reports, but talk to your neighbor. Tell them I love you. Say God bless you. That's why after service, I say hug someone and say something. Some of you, as soon as the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, you frown your face, you go and stand outside. Listen, I respect your commitment to vision, but you are robbing yourself and God and your environment of this dimension of love friendliness this dimension let's hurry up number four if God is helping you say amen. amen the fourth dimension of love is sacrifice sacrifice the length the breadth the height the depth of the love of God it is these compositions that make the fullness of God's love what is sacrifice giving up something you consider valuable for the sake of someone or a better cause giving up something you consider valuable for the sake of someone or a better cause giving up something you consider valuable for the sake of someone or a better cause you must give up something if you want to fulfill the last dimension of love sacrifice talks of constraint sacrifice talks of inconvenience very uncomfortably sometimes sacrifice talks of pain hmm. a language our generation does not know again pain constraint the inconveniences that if need be you may have to go through because of someone or a cause that you consider to be nobler please look up i have mentioned four parameters ready what's number one passion what's number two commitment what's number three pleasure what's number four sacrifice sacrifice is sacrifice featured in your idea of love love for your vision love for your assignment brothers and sisters we are all happy right now enjoying what god is doing here but how many of you know that since as early as maybe sometimes seven in the morning work is already going on in cgc here prayer department members came by uh, four four o'clock praying for at least one hour for this meeting the worship team here several people you came and found seats arranged already you came and found the seats clean 
sometimes during the rainy season you see the pain as soon as you share the grace you are going to hug one another and go back every week i leave this place past 12 the next day past 12 because i have to spend an extra one or two hours standing the moment i come for koinonia i sit down only for a few minutes once i get up standing it is until i leave while you are sitting i'm standing sometimes during the workers retreat i am standing from at, at about nine sometimes till evening or night and afterwards i may still have to counsel people and go back show me your sacrifice as a proof of love show me the sacrifice you are doing for that sister as a proof that you love her show me the sacrifice you are doing for that brother show me the sacrifice you are doing for your wife your husband your children if there is no sacrifice there is no love love is measured by sacrifice not sacrifice alone but it is an index i look at parents and i see how they care for their children i look at other parents i see how irresponsible they are over their children oh we need school fees or we need something uh, sorry i need to do something and they say i love you no sir lord i love you and then you want to give offering you came with two thousand you remove hundred naira and return it back you remove 50 naira and return it back then you remove the old 20 naira and god is watching saying is that what you call love sacrifice these people are standing every single one of them i'm here preaching you are here enjoying and male and female they are standing if we stand during koinonia vigils they are standing when they get tired they go back to rest a bit some of the people come sacrifice believers don't understand the language of sacrifice every little inconvenience there's no ac there's no this there's no this sacrifice the sacrifice of waking up in the night whether it's convenient or not to pray the sacrifice to pursue and study the sacrifice to delay gratification with your finances god gave you one small one or two million instead of blowing it to live a fake life you say let me pay the price and sacrifice this so that my children will eat what i did not eat sacrifice how many selfish parents i'm sorry to say it with all due respect they saw the future of the children they saw their present they would have paid a price some of us would have been happy now but they chose their belly at the expense of a generation they had the opportunity to have bought the land in 1964 1974 just buying the land without developing it instead of going for one polo club competition they would have used that money to buy the land that single land would have been over 100 million today and they would have been able to train everybody empower their young men support their sisters but selfishness and they look at you and say children i love you no wonder the resentment rises in many young people for their parents there is no sacrifice you hardly will hate someone or a thing that sacrifices how many leaders claim they love their people how many pastors claim they love their members there is no index to measure sacrifice everything that is an inconvenience goes to the members the convenience comes to the pastor no sir a true shepherd lays down does not walk on his sheep lays down what are you laying down for your wife what are you laying down for your husband what are you laying down for that come darling for that lady you want to get married to what are you laying down for the guy you want to get married to? his birthday is coming well let me put something small you call him hello sir your your birthday is coming can you give me the money to cook for you is that sacrifice is that sacrifice that sacrifice how many of our parents claim that they love a student or they love whatever they come into a city where you are there 
carry out a business transaction cannot even drop a small envelope is when they leave they say i came there there is no sacrifice sacrifice is not about convenience so do not expect it to be convenient there are times both for god and men it will inconvenience you ask any married man there are times you are in a straight betwixt between your child's school fees and another equally important thing but you may have to lay it down bless god for some of our mothers that will not buy one wrapper for five years so that their children will eat now that's love to me bless god for some of our fathers who would rather park the car and not take 400,000 to buy a new gearbox he says that 400,000 can sponsor my children let me send them to school not so that they will feed me back when they are graduates that's investment that's not love are we together our generation does not understand the language of sacrifice sister let me tell you you are not a good wife if you don't understand sacrifice unfortunately you know i love our sisters but there is a deception that is looming across the horizon where many ladies believe everything about relationship is all about their pleasure and enjoyment anything that has to do with a little sacrifice they frown and revolt and rebel no how about brothers who think because you are a celebrity figure because you are this you are a graduate you are working in an oil and gas company and all these things are happening you want the lady to worship you forever because you are this somebody is lying to somebody somewhere sacrifice sacrifice how many businessmen cannot make sacrifice for their future how many young men i look at some not, not necessarily here i look around and i see young people that i know don't have anything much i see what they are wearing i watch their shoes even a millionaire is not wearing that kind of shoe and i ask them what do you have in saving them nothing and that person wants to marry and that person is looking at a lady he loves or a guy that he loves how many ladies carry their future and use it to make themselves beautiful today no sacrifice people are poor not just because the devil is powerful this sacrifice is what we lack in our generation hallelujah you are considering a relationship or you are considering marriage or you are married please don't go into it it's not a sin be ready for sacrifice first there are men who will come back with salary and ask their wives my wife can can you give this person twenty thousand? whereas you have your own one million let's tell ourselves the truth and it starts from relationship sacrifice these four dimensions are the dimensions that spell love give us ephesians chapter 3 again ephesians chapter 3 let's hurry up verse 18 that you will be able to comprehend with all the saints and that includes the family of koinonia what is the passion and the commitment and the pleasure and the sacrifice dimensions that are involved the bible calls these dimensions the fullness of the love of god i want you to look at this carefully which dimension so when you say brother i love you or sister i love you or destiny i love you or jesus i love you my question again is which one of them all of them jesus i have pleasure towards you and the things you can give me he says wonderful how about sacrifice for me how about commitment for me no i don't have those ones let me show you a secret brothers and sisters that will give you an opportunity to enjoy your marriage your relationship your vision whether you are born again or not if you subscribe to these four templates on anything you will succeed in it it's true 
some of the best i've studied some of the top business entrepreneurs around the world this they subscribe to this template they may not acknowledge jesus don't just look at their results look at their passion look at their commitment look at the pleasure they derive from what they are doing no matter how cumbersome and then look at the sacrifices i i studied one one particular businessman and when i saw what that guy went through i said compared to what he went through i still think that the world still should reward him his name is nikola tesla tesla is one of the genesis had about 700 patents to his honor he lived a secluded life of sacrifice creating the inventions today that we accredit to different people it was the product of the pain of that man didn't get married in his life didn't do a lot of things began to research many of, he was light years ahead of humanity and he died leaving his blessing sacrifice I watch Miles Monroe's videos great mentor in life and in death I see how that that man cheated death he's long gone but his wisdom still guides us there is illumination the touch from his experiences guide us towards a great destiny what are you willing to lay down for the anointing you claim you want what are you willing to lay down for the kind of lady you are praying for what are you willing to lay down sister for the kind of husband you are praying for it is free but it's not cheap you must be willing to lay down something lord i want a visionary guy i want somebody who loves god god says they are all available let me see what you are willing to lay down can you lay down the time the ego the inconvenience will you be able to submit to such a man with gladness as one who is worthy of your honor for his paradigm oh lord i have my own ego i don't want to be cheap and god says all right go and find men who are like you but if it's my son you want you must be serious oh lord i want this lady beautiful gorgeous whatever parameters you use and god says they are available but gentlemen let me see what you are willing to lay down a lady who is that virtuous deserves a responsible man a lady who is that virtuous god will tell you deserves a blessed man if you consider that lady to be priceless enough then you must rise to the occasion we have this pride in our world that all fingers are equal it's a lie that includes human beings sister there are some kinds of brothers god will never give you the way you are it's not a bad talk it is true god is not a fool he gave unto his one five talents two this is god oh, who is not unjust god is not unjust but he gives one five talents i talk to brothers and sometimes when i hear brothers i ask them question what kind of sister do you want when they describe that lady i look at the brother and i know he's joking i already know his prayer will not be answered because god is not a fool if you want the level of qualitative sister you are making for you because god will not yoke people on equally no sir lord i want a ministry like benny Hinn. and god says really are you willing to do what Benny Hinn is doing? That for two weeks he can close himself and nobody will see him. At the beginning of a new year, the first seven days, nobody sees him. Drive fast, he's alone with God, accessing power. Don't let the suit deceive you. If you want to marry Benny Hinn, you must be able to be like him. Otherwise, you'll be unequally yoked. You will carry pleasure into the relationship. And Benny Hinn will say, you love that Benny Hinn came from this secret place. It's amazing how people revolt when they see the demands for their desires. I want prosperity. Oh God, I want to be blessed. I'm a millionaire in Jesus' name. And God says, no problem. Millionaires from me must be able to say yes, sir, to every instruction I give. Agreed? Yes. Give the only one million in your account. I said, God, I don't understand. He said, you, you had me. You want me to bless you. You want me to talk to someone else who is like you. To send 10 million to your account. Prove to me you are worthy to be my treasurer. By answering me every time I speak to you. You would think 
is the kind of Abraham's test that God will say stop till your internet transfer does send is gone and then your balance is one naira or five naira and you would think God will talk to the person to send it back it's gone and brothers and sisters two months after that giving you feel like dying and you say Lord but I'm not lazy it took me three years to save this one million and the heavens become silent you think God is not watching he's looking one day this God one day you are sitting somewhere that is not your business and someone will come and say there is a contract somewhere um do you have a company yes i have but we are not what do you do i sell clothes leave clothes Jare, come and he gives you something and all of a sudden millions enter your account and people say it's not fair say go and ask him what is not fair about it don't be angry when you see god lifting people find out what they are doing the blood that drips from their altar is what attracts the attention of heaven when you see a man of god sometimes you people just hear me talk oh the power of god is this and people are shouting it's not magical my brother find out what my secret place is don't don't claim i say it he is grace but we are not stupid there is a sacrifice on that altar you see just think you get up and touch somebody because the bible says bless no there is a sacrifice we honor jesus among other reasons because he hung on that cross brothers and sisters i hope you know there was no covering around him it's just films that put it because children will be watching too that 33 year old man was hung naked on the cross his only covering was blood he would have stopped it but he said this is the price for that throne so don't you dare insult that throne that's why every demon must answer when you invoke the power in that throne you don't know what he went through the highest and noblest expression of true love is sacrifice it's not the only one but it is sacrifice Pray one minute over these four things. We are still going to continue. Pray while you are seated. Please pray. How nang Allah shine abani saborai shine abani salama. Shine a one case in Chata Kaunar Allah Shine a bani sabo Shine a bani salama Shine a one case in Chata Pray Lord give me the grace that passion be captured in my definition of love let me be passionate about something let me be passionate about my wife let me be passionate about my husband let's be sincere and tell us ourselves the truth are you passionate about the business are you passionate about god are you committed to the sister are you committed to the brother or you just want to marry you want to exit bachelorhood you want to exit spinsterhood and you are so selfish that you are not looking to see that you are actually capturing these dimensions how about pleasure pleasure your life must produce pleasure to your spouse your life must produce pleasure to your parents to your leaders to your office to your company you can't just be taking your life must produce pleasure to god yes all men are not perfect but your life must produce pleasure to god finally sacrifice pray this issue of having it at my thumbs ladies pray this issue of having it at my will no sir it can't always be the way you want life is not like that go and ask any married man 
ask anybody in a visionary relationship ask every millionaire ask any great man of god there are constraints there are times it will not go your way don't take it personal there are times it will not go your way sacrifice sacrifice hallelujah sit down what then is love seeing that love is not feeling seeing that love is not emotions seeing that love is not a beautiful face a macho six pack seeing that love is not a jeep packed outside seeing that love is not the ability to cook well in a lady seeing that love is not even the prayer favor of a guy what then is love for the rest of your life as you live don't forget what i'm about to teach you if you master this as taught by the inventor of love himself higher than any relationship expert higher than any consultant psychologist this is god's perspective of love number one love true love is a choice write it down true love is a choice true love is a choice it's an act of the will true love is not feelings when you believe you are in love then it is a choice listen come to sin the next time you say to sin i love you what you have said is to sin i choose you by the act of my will i have chosen whether or not i think you are the best whether or not i think you are the brightest whether or not i think you are the finest chef whether or not i think you are the most beautiful lady the most handsome guy the most visionary the most born again whether or not this business is the one that makes me become a millionaire fastest whether or not this ministry is the most anointed when i say i love you i'm saying i choose you is a choice any manifestation of love especially in the context of relationship and marriage that usurps the will of man is witchcraft no matter what vision you see about what lady no matter what dream you have about what brother no matter what counselors tell you in the final analysis your will must be involved otherwise it is not true love write it down love true love is a choice a choice to be and live with someone in the context of marriage when you say you love someone it is a decision you have made to be a decision to live with that someone not a decision to live with the person look up if the person is perfect not a decision to live with someone if things are good or bad when you say jesus i love you now you know what you are saying jesus i choose you i have gone online and googled all the gods on the earth and i've seen names that i was never told but i checked everything and I came to you, Jesus, for whatever reason. I've made up my mind to go God's way for the rest of my life. That's love, brother. I've made up my mind to go God's way for the rest of my life. Pastor Alpha chose Annie. He made up his mind that as far as this life is concerned, this is the personality who will be with me 
it doesn't matter whether he's happy with her or sad it doesn't matter whether she's happy with him or sad whatever differences arise is not worthy enough to corrupt this decision brother that's love if you ever say you like a lady make sure this is what you are saying so as i'm talking now be checking what you are doing are you choosing the person for now or are you choosing the person some of you are about to ask ladies this week next week listen before you go to anybody and say i love you ask a very clear question have i chosen you or are you just choosing because of your level of exposure i suspect emeka is a doctor i'm not yet clear so let me let me say yes to him while i verify if i find out oh i i thought he was the one i it's another face so i don't love him again i love you i choose you if a maker says i know i studied um, medicine but the lord is calling me and he's sending me to zamfara now your love is being tested you thought it was about a great guy who would be a consultant have his private hospital fly you around unfortunately you said you choose him many of us young people don't know what we're saying truly speaking when we mention this love thing lightly lord i love the assignment you have given me and then we sit down two years lord i said i love you and i love this assignment but i have only five members i have on, nobody's caring for me lord i'm on my way going after all i read this i can go and start extra morals and god says you don't love it a choice everybody say a choice say it again a choice ask anybody who has been married for a long time they will tell you there were legitimate reasons as to why they will feel they made a mistake in that marriage but every time they remember their choice that's why when you stand on stage with your wife they don't ask your father to answer for you or your mother to answer for you like rapture you stand alone is god speaking to us tonight because what i'm saying is very important i love you too much and god knows and sees my heart that i have an assignment to bridge the ignorance and the catastrophe that the devil is programming to happen between young people and young ladies many ladies who claim they love many guys have not chosen therein lies the revelation of these hilarious mood swings that fly up today and tomorrow a choice is a costly thing when you know the gravity you will not be hasty you will think well you won't say i am 35 i need to hurry up time is not on my side to choose that's why it matters who preaches to you to give your life to christ it matters what you are told if all you are told is that you come to jesus christ and all your troubles go away i believe in the victory of christ but brothers and sisters i've shown you the dimensions of love and there are times that some of those dimensions will cost you there are people who gave their lives to christ and they did not last seven days they knew that what they were signing up for was a bomb blast there are reverends in different parts of this nation who said i love you and with all the terrorism there jesus i love you and on sunday they had the sounds of bombs and they still got up and looked at their wives and said honey if i never come back let it be that i died for the one i loved and they went and were killed and never returned they got up that morning knowing they may die ha! who corrupted our definition of love and left it only to pleasure and that at our own times you may not like me for what i'm sharing but i tell you this this is the recommendation from the inventor of this thing a choice i've made a choice to serve god with all my life if donald trump calls me and says young man we want to give you a very noble position in america you're receiving a salary of hundred thousand dollars per month with anything you want do you think i'll run and leave you I know what some of you will do just hearing it although you are not the ones you will never come to church again you go and cook food and bring for me and say remember me <laughs> don't 
Though man forsake me, still I will follow. No turning back, no turning back. Though man forsake me, still I will follow. No turning back, no turning back. Listen. This work of the ministry you see me do is not because I don't have options. Brothers and sisters, this man standing before you is, is a businessman. I think I'm quite smart. There are many other things I would have chosen to do with my life. Are we together? Yes. But it's a choice that I will stand and communicate the life and the power of Jesus. I never came into ministry for honorarium. Do you know, let me tell you, God is my witness. When I started ministry, I didn't know they used to give men seats and honorarium. But right now, you see every young man quarreling just because they called him into a small group to share something for 10 minutes. And he finishes, he refuses to go. You call him come and play keyboard in the house of god a small church that the entire titan offering is not up to 30 30 000. the person said pay me twenty thousand because you went to a music school it's a choice it's a choice that's why we must take care of our children because they did not choose we owe a responsibility to take care of them even if the couples make mistake with their lives the children must not be victims of it they didn't choose any relationship built by force and whose power to choose is taken away is an ungodly relationship at every point of your relationship the power to choose must remain listen that's why those who abuse women are going to hellfire if they don't repent those who beat and when a man beats and slaps his wife forcing her to make a decision when a woman beats and slaps her husband forcing him to make it a decision when a woman manipulates her husband against his will like jezebel into doing what was not willingly decided that's not love it's witchcraft every relationship and every marriage must leave the willingness of the personalities involved sadly this extends right now in the days that we live even to extended families where parents and in-laws attempt to choke their hands and manipulate the state of marriages if you must marry my daughter or now that you are married to my daughter you must live in london or you must live in this no matter what god is telling you these things are wrong love is a choice and everything around it must remain a choice now let me tell you this this is how god helps people especially when it comes to making decisions you can go to god and god will tell you son i gave you the will to choose whatever woman you want and you say lord i take that will back by myself to you because i am not sure of my decision i know how vulnerable i am so justified before heaven that you gave me the power to choose i have returned it back to you as a token of my trust and god says now that's it you have proven to me that if i choose a wife for you it is not against your will because you trust me that's the only condition where you will see the dream and trust it and the vision and trust it not just that you get up and see anything and stand up and blame god It's a choice number two hmm. true love is understanding the value the worth and the significance of a person true love is understanding the value the worth the significance of a person or a thing to God to you and to humanity true love is understanding the value 
the worth the importance the significance of a person to god number one to your life number two and to society number three the second definition of love is love is understanding value when you pay fifty thousand dollars to buy a car you park that car in a special garage because of what it cost you to obtain it now watch this come are you ready to marry this woman and take her as your lovely wedded wife you said yes they asked her what of you yes two of you and then just because she should she did not she was not able to give you a child listen carefully first month of marriage no child second month of marriage no child or whatever it is all of a sudden you begin to make derogatory statements two men cannot live in the same house so what you are saying is i listen i do not see your worth i do not see your value i do not see your significance to god to me and to society true love is understanding the value of things so when you are doing that business you love that business only if you understand the significance of that business to kingdom advancement the significance of that business to your finances the significance to the development of your society if not don't say i love it why do i wake up in the night and study and prepare for every message and labor through the hours is because i love god is because i love you i understand what this information will do to your life will do to the kingdom will do to your children and your children's children never say you love any lady whose significance to your life you have not perceived let me tell you this look at me everybody if you have any measure of success before a lady or a man enters your life be careful because the more successful you are chances are that you will hardly see the significance of a man or a woman in your life there are successful women who are collecting three hundred thousand as single ladies four hundred thousand as single ladies they are traveling to embassies they have snapped with presidents there is every likelihood that they will be bad wives you know why because based on their experiences almost everything a man should represent has been represented in their success so when they say they want to marry a man they find out that when the man comes and says my food say your your, your what are you crazy i stay in a hotel with 13 towels and servants come and give me this and you are saying i should pound yam for you you are reducing me they say to a village girl the best recommendation for such a beautiful sister is remain single and support the kingdom yes you will be more useful to god it's true that's why paul didn't marry if paul married only god knows the version of pain that the church would have received the wife would have seen her husband less than 10 times in his entire lifetime are we together understanding value i watch relationships and i see how the ladies devalue the men because maybe they didn't read certain things or they have not become certain things yet and you see the communication of devaluation to the men that's not love love is that i perceive your significance in my life The first sign God gave me that the body of Christ is not working in love is that we focus on actions above intentions. We focus on actions above intentions. This is a dangerous ideology where you judge men based on actions and not just intentions. The Bible tells us this. It says man looks at the outward appearance in other words the physical manifestation but god discerns the motive behind our activity
activities are we together so for instance for instance i can be a rapper let me just give you an instance i can be a rapper a christian rapper are we together now and um simply because i can come up and i'm just rapping you can write me off and just look at me and think because i'm rapping i look like somebody who sleeps around i look like somebody who is not serious with god and use the actions rather than the intentions is the number one mistake that we are making in the body of christ that the lord revealed to me that is a revelation that the love of god is truly not grounded in our hearts we focus on actions while actions are very important because the bible says out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks but many times if you really really want to discern things by the spirit you must sustain a technology in the spirit to discern intentions beyond actions are we together now a preacher may be preaching for instance and maybe communication barrier or something like that he may make a statement like um God's primary assignment is to kill you. Something like that. And all of a sudden a newspaper says, God's primary assignment is to kill you. Caption. Heresy preached by A and B and C. And because we live in a generation that is gullible to hear bad things, we always want to check. Ah, ah, God's assignment is to kill you. Nobody goes to listen to the remaining part of the message and discern the intention. Are we together? And it is based on that we have libeled men of God. It is based on that we have libeled people. How many people are moving around and saying, my mother told me, I, you will see if you succeed. No. To mean that her actions meant she's, she's happy so that you will fail. Is that not true? And then it's, it gets so bad when you now go to a meeting where they say anybody standing against your family, that bed, where, even if it's your mother, you say, yes, even if it's my mother, you take that anger and say, my mother told me, or maybe my father said you are a failure. They may not really mean it. They may be communicating pain at that time. If you have the ability to look at intentions beyond actions, you are a wise man. Intentions. As I walk with people, I always try to discern the intentions, the intent of certain things. Physical actions are not guaranteed. They are not the best way of truly revealing our intentions. A wife can come to her husband, for instance, maybe out of frustration about his carelessness, and she can make a statement out of pain and say, look, if you, don't, if you stop giving me money, make sure you are not going to be eating in this house. And the husband says, oh, if I don't give you money, I will not eat in this house. If I give you money, I eat in this house. You claim you are a deacon in your church. Is that what they are teaching you? No, husband, look at the intention. What your wife is trying to say is, I'm hurt by your irresponsibility. And I would love you to do something about it. Are we together? Listen, you, are, you become an exceptional leader, an exceptional believer. If you sustain the ability to discern intentions. We have. We have. Created. Seditions in our families. We have grouped ourselves into two. A family of five people. Father and the, his favorite. Mother and the other three people. Because of our ability to judge intentions. You look at a man whose face is like that. Whether he's happy or not, his face is the same. You just look at him and say, this guy is a wicked person. You look wicked, I'm sure you are wicked. Whereas that person is the nicest person you will ever meet in your life. Have you seen people like that? I don't like this guy. His face is mean. It's not the person's fault. The person is like that. Your, your face is this. You will never get a wife. Or you will never do this. We, we judge actions more than anything. A woman comes to Jesus with an alabaster box. Are we together? The Bible lets us know that this woman has had a challenging past. And then she gathered one year's wages. Are we together now? Beautiful woman. She steps into a room. 
and everybody is sitting there religious people together with the disciples and this woman comes to jesus sincerely and gets down on her knees and the first thing many people are thinking is seduction jesus you are in trouble jesus you are in trouble your ministry is about to die nobody is thinking worship a woman is coming with a genuine motive please while you are laughing take seriously these are the things that the lord told me they are not things that i guessed destroying the body of christ the bible says to the pure all things are pure when your mind is corrupted it becomes the vista from which you interpret everything hallelujah and she kneels down before him and the bible says she takes her alabaster box breaks it at his feet right and the aroma and the the fragrance just rises as an incense of worship that represented her worth for one year and she broke it and the bible says she used her hair hey her hair and then began to clean his feet and jesus did not do anything about it i'm sure the disciples will say jesus you better don't play games with us here what is going on madam where do you know this guy that you come and break alabaster box and judas ah why are you doing this you would have gathered everything and let's give it to the poor the bible only records what judas said he didn't tell us what the remaining said i can assure you he was not the only person that spoke but jesus said don't don't stop her that was the word of god the bread of life he was looking at this woman's feet and he said everywhere they talk about him they will also make reference to this are we together now he was able to look at her intentions a woman who was caught in adultery they never brought the man she ran and came to jesus christ right and i mean they pushed her there and they said this and that and that and jesus looked at them and he saw that woman she felt sorry for herself she felt sad and she was just hoping there would be a hand to hold her and say you can start again and jesus looked at all the psychophants and the religious people and he says he who has no sin among you be the first to cast stones when you learn to judge the intentions of people i counsel people a lot are we together and i talk to pastors i talk to leaders there are times a man of God can come and meet me and say, man of God, I need you to pray for me. I love God, but I'm dying. I'm dying of immorality. I can easily look at that person and say, you? Ah, are your members aware that you are dying of immorality? I look sincerely. And the only thing I tell them is, rebels don't come to God. They run away from him. When you come to God, it's a sign that you are not a rebel. And I look at him. How many times have we injured the wounded soldiers in the body of Christ? Because we look beyond. We don't look at intentions. We look at actions. Are we together now? Love. A husband looks at the wife. And finds out that there is another man who has been suffering. And out of compassion, she's trying to help him. And he says, if you are having an affair, tell me now. Let me kill you and kill myself. Why don't you come down and say, okay, I, I, I see your motive that you really want to help this person. But I'm a bit uncomfortable with it. Why don't you structure it and do it this way and that? Do you know this simple thing I've, I'm telling you has broken marriages, has scattered churches, are we together, has produced it enemies men of God who never see eyeball to eyeball brothers and sisters all kinds of people because we are experts at judging actions above intentions learn this tonight if you are in this you are short-circuiting the glory of God from your life meaning he can never send to you a lady who comes to you and say man of God I've been involved in abortion 12 times you say young lady are you seeing that door is still open forward march no no god is love the bible says for he causes the sun to rise 
on both the just and unjust part of my desire in life is that my hands will remain open as a place of succor for wounded people that every time they look around and there is nowhere they can run to they can find a heaven that we can clean their tears and wash the garments together and by the grace of God, Koinonia will remain that place. We will never drive our wounded soldiers. We will never drive people that are far away. There are people who have given their lives to Christ. But for some reason, because of pressure, maybe family and all of that, they derailed and they got into all kinds of things. Every time we meet those people, do you go to church now? Say, man of God, I have not gone to church. You are such a stupid person. Jesus helped you. You would have died that day blah 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 and you are a disappointment to the kingdom huh this is what you are doing whereas that gentleman or that lady if you would look at their intentions what they are saying is i need help can somebody please help me we want crowd i wrote a song years ago one day i'll sing it for you it's called the bandage is larger than the wound powerful song if i produced an album I would have blessed people and made money from that song. Worship team, I will give you people when you are ready to write you. Very powerful. The bandage is larger than the wound When his loving arms surround you He binds that broken heart And then, I, I can't remember the rest, but I mean, what a beautiful song. Imagine somebody singing that kind of song to you. Come on. When was the last time someone ran to you and believed that they are coming to you, you will be able to understand them. One of the greatest gifts people can give to you is that trust that you have the ability to understand them. Do you know how people crave to be understood? Are we together now? God, that's why God took out time to send the Holy Spirit so that you can understand him. It pains the Lord when we misunderstand him. When people turn and say, God, if you were alive, why did my father die? If you were alive, why did my mother die? If you were alive, why did I lose the job? So he sends the Holy Spirit to teach you the word. Because in teaching the word, he, you will correct the wrong ideologies you've had about him. So he will begin to teach you all the laws of the kingdom. And in it, you will now look and say, wow. So my poverty was not caused by you. There is something I did not know. God, you are a faithful God. And I'm sorry for blaming you for something you do not have a hand in it. God left the Holy Spirit so that he will be understood. Listen, come to a point in your life where you learn to judge intentions behind motives. I think two years ago, a man sent me a text. His daughter slapped him. Real daughter, biological daughter. Gave the father a slap and spoke all kinds of nonsense against the man and said this and that and that. If he plays with her, she will arrange, uh, uh, what they call it, all these boys that don't have anything they are doing. You just give them anything and they come and beat somebody for you. Now, he says that they will make that arrangement and come and beat the father. The man was wise because the ego of a man will not tolerate that. He will first kill the lady first before he will look for the man of God that will raise her back to life. But then this man did something. I'm, I'm not just opening up people's secrets. I just want to use it as a point. The man did something that taught me a lesson on fatherhood. When the daughter slapped him and did everything, he picked up his phone and called me. It was ringing, ringing. I saw the number ringing and then I picked up and then he said, ask you some person. I said, how are you, sir? It's been a while. And he says, you will not believe if I tell you this, Apostle. I said, what is it, sir? He said, can you imagine my daughter? Of course, it doesn't mean he was calm and soft. He was boiling and angry. But he was able to contain himself. My daughter that I gave birth to takes a hand and slaps me because she has begun to follow men that are my age. You know, and all, you know how men talk when they are angry. And etc., etc. Et and he did this and that. And then... Um, I began to talk and I told him, I said, Daddy, I, I know that this is very bad and this and that. And then he calmed down. And then he said, you know what, Apostle, this is, this is where the story is. He said, it reminds me of what we do to the Lord all the time. Ah. 
I felt ashamed. At once, I just, I felt, oh God, how many times did I slap you from morning till now? And then the man said, I just wanted to express it to you. I'm her father. I'll work on it. Until this lady left, she was still attending Koinonia. Ever sorry for that attitude. And today her and her father, I may not call them best of friends, but she honors him with her life because he did something to her. He told me that later in the evening he called her and he sat her down. And he says, any lady that disrespects her parents will die. The Bible says it. And began to talk to the lady and I was surprised. I was very surprised that the lady booked for counseling. When she came for counseling, she never knew that the father had spoken to me. I wanted to see what she was going to come and meet me for. And she opened up and told me, said, I did something that is unthinkable. I think I'm cursed. I said, no, no, you are not cursed. This and that and that and that. And in my presence, she called the father and apologized to him. And I have a lot of wine. I carried one wine. I say, apology is not enough. Carry this wine, pray in tongues on it and go and apologize. Also apologize to your mother. That's her husband you slap and all of that and everything was over now listen listen what is the point of all this story the father though angry had the ability to see the motif the motivation and was able to contain himself and by it he won the lady imagine if he fought her and and injured her or did something fire for fire never produces a solution it ends up in ashes this is what many pastors have done. This is what many people have done. Some of us sitting right here, this is what we have done to our family members. We have brought seditions and bitter hatred among one another. Especially for families that are polygamous. I'm sorry to say it, but I have to address it. Families that are polygamous. We are experts at creating intentions. I saw stepmother standing near the pot and they said nobody should eat. There's trouble. No, 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 no. Learn to judge intentions. Say, I receive grace to look beyond actions and see the intentions of people. Your roommate comes in and she's edgy and moody and all of that. And you don't take out time to find out. Probably she saw her results and things were bad. Or they just called her at home and said something had happened. And you just look and say, smile, Jerry, and say, please, 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 I'm not in the mood. Say, sorry, oh, don't ever talk to us too again if you are like that. No. Learn to look at the intentions of people. There are people who have passed me, for instance. Sometimes they pass me, they don't even greet me. I don't turn and say, come, oh, let's, let's define something here. No, 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 no. No. Men will love you and they will give your life for you if they know that you are one person who has sustained the ability to look beyond the motives. Hallelujah. Yes, ago I managed one very serious issue. One guy got a lady pregnant and um, the families were coming for counseling and they came and met here. They didn't plan to come. But the two families came to report the situation and then they met there. It was, it was a catastrophic event that happened. I mean, um, I, I say all of these things just to, just to help you. It was a serious thing. You know, and of course, you know it's not going to be a bed of roses. There will be tearing people and all of that and, and so on and so forth. But the first thing I tried to discern, I wasn't really concerned about the loved ones. I was looking at the individuals. Forgiveness is useless when there is no repentance. Let me tell you something you need to understand. Forgiveness is useless when there is no repentance. If, if I walk up to Tosin today and I insult her, and I just say, sorry, sorry, with the intention of insulting her again, if okay, it's called rebellion. Forgiveness is only useful. When there is repentance, what is repentance? A genuine state of brokenness 
and a change of heart so that you do not misunderstand what I'm saying and then allow people to take you for a ride. Forgiveness is useless when there is no repentance. The second thing the Lord showed me that communicates lack or the absence of the love of God in the body of Christ and among believers is that we hate people and we fight people for sustaining perspectives that are different from ours. This is a big one. We hate people and we fight people for sustaining a paradigm that is different from ours. It's a major mistake I've seen in the body. The moment your thinking is not like my own Joshua Selman, I hate you. The moment my perspective is not like your own, I hate you. And this is probably a, a very big one, especially among denominations. Because we have tremendous hatred. There are people who will see a lady or a guy from another ministry or another denomination and never knowing the person, they already have anger and hatred and resentment. There are people for, for putting on a watch like this, you can already be angry. Are, are you getting what I'm saying? When you just dressing well is enough to create anger. There are people when you see somebody who doesn't dress very well, you are still angry. It's, 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 a, it's an issue of concern, but not enough to be that angry. We fight people who do not sustain similar ideologies. This is what causes trouble between siblings at home. This is what causes trouble between pastors. Are we together now? Listen. If you really want to love people, you must have an ability to respect people's perspective about life. It is very important. The whole world cannot be koinonia. The whole world cannot be Joshua Selman. Let me guarantee you if the whole world is like me, this world will be a mess. I repeat, if the whole world is like me, this world will be a mess. I know you like me because I'm preaching. You have not seen how boring other areas of my life are. Trust me, if you know how boring other areas of my life are, how about coming to meet me wanting to crack a joke and all I'm telling you is scriptures. Do you like that? Well, forget about the guys. Ladies, do you like that? Do you want to marry that kind of person? <laughs> are we together now? You can see the ladies responding. It's easy to see me preach and think, oh, this is wonderful because you are seeing revelation. But let me tell you one truth. Listen, brothers and sisters. If you don't learn to respect people for their perspectives. If I make you, if I make Pastor Femi, for instance, the president of ENI for one year, you'll be amazed at the remarkable changes that will happen in the ministry. You will find out that Koinonia may step into another dimension. Better ideas, better creativity. However, you must have the ability to um respect people's ideologies this is why some pastors can never be invited to preach in other churches aside from their churches i've preached almost everywhere i've preached in serubim and seraphim they like me oh, two of their branches i've preached there i've preached in anglican i've preached in uh, um, 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 catholic equa cooking lutheran i've preached open air crusade I preach all kinds of things. The one with no name. Youth group. Charismatic. Everything. You know why? Listen. Among other things, I have sustained an ability to respect. Listen. Don't major on the minors. I minor on the majors. I give you an instance. You go to minister in a charismatic meeting, for instance. And then, you know, uh, um, they are... They are they are making their, their uh, recitations and all of that. And you just come because you are a pure Pentecostal charismatic. You put your hand and you are wondering what the hell is going on here. What are all these people doing? That terrible childish attitude will put you off. When you study global leadership, one of the principles of global leadership is the ability to be accommodating yet not compromising. 
the ability the bible puts it this way it says you are in the world but not of the world you don't have to bend to your values but your your ability to tolerate people's differences must be elastic enough to accommodate people with different perspectives and ideologies there are churches where if you don't dance you are in trouble immediately they are dancing people are dancing and you just stand you are just moving around they say oh god please we dance in this church no you you have no right to harass anybody that way that's bullying that's intimidation again in a church where people are generally conservative someone is just dancing to god and dancing alone and you just stop him and say sorry uh, i don't know what exactly is happening to you but i think you have no it's still wrong are we together if in your house you eat with fork spoon and knife if you come to my house i say please bring warm water for me we don't eat swallow with with fork and spoon and knife in our house you should be able to respect that not to look and say oh God, we were all we all grew up in uk and we respect no 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 you don't do that when was the last time you were able to be bending enough to accommodate people's differences and then you will see why many churches are losing members because of the rigidity they are unbending there are so many churches their youths are leaving and running away because they they have put stringent conditions and will not have that sense of accommodation i remember when koinonia started i got a lot of text messages some said look let's go hill song let's sing contemporary others say no 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 we are not proud of africa with nigerians the way you do let's be singing our local songs and i said thank god god didn't call us god called me i will listen to god if you are not comfortable come and sit down after praise and worship there is still a path for you to enjoy are we together love don't fight people that sustain a perspective that is not your own there are churches for instance there are men of god who preach with audio visuals you see them they they have to use powerpoint are we together because of the nature of the teaching grace upon their life they take root words together and put them down and they want to make you understand you may come from a, a ministry where the moment they say praise the lord somebody shouting under the anointing now you go to a place where you sit down and somebody is trying to join this word and say please i need solid food i i, I what is all this uh, don't i know the meaning of art or of no we don't have that accommodation is robbing us we never are able to see the power of god there are churches that i go to i know that they don't pray in tongues publicly i will minister there you will never hear me pray in tongues once it doesn't mean i've stopped believing in it but i must be able to make that adjustment so that the people can receive are you getting what i'm saying now absolutely there are churches that may not give that kind of accommodation for you to be jumping around like this you can't go to a church for instance a core orthodox church and when you are shouting the next thing you climb a chair and you are giving an illustration or you come and tap one elder and say prof come 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 on come on let me use you as an example you are messing up listen learn what i'm giving you wisdom learn this some of us out of our zeal you think everywhere is like your church no there are churches for putting water on this table you are you are going to answer a lot of questions not even to talk of five alive or banana or apple you are in trouble apple what for but there are churches if you don't do that they will query you are we together you come and you see banana and orange don't just come and say are they why are they not eating at home now no. don't do that i'm teaching you how to love the body because these are the things that cause trouble are we together This keyboard that is playing now, there are churches when a man of God stands everywhere becomes silent. No drums, no moving around, no camera, no snapping. No even saying yes. You know, like you respond, but no, 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 you don't do this. This thing you are doing now, this laughing, no, you don't do that. You are silent and you maintain an attitude of sober reflection. That's all right. That's all right. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. There are very few hymns I don't know. 
That's why when I get to any church, hymn book or not, once you raise the hymn, I will sing it. I think it was in, 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 in um, All Saints or so that I went to minister, I think a year or two or so ago. And then uh, I was telling them that I can, I can recite the Apostles' Creed beginning to end. I was a seminarian. I still am. Archbishop Benjamin Kwashi prayed, prayed, prayed and hoped that I would become a seminarian. But God just decided to call me. I'm still a seminarian. Hallelujah. What is your level of accommodation in the body of Christ? Can an Equa church invite you as a pastor and you can go and bless the people without breaking people's hearts and doing all kinds of nonsense? Can a Catholic church invite you and you go and get blessed? This is how some of us behave even when we go to certain families. You see men behave like that. You go to the family, you find out that they remove their shoes in front and you just step and march and enter and they say, sorry sir. They are even trying to tell you, you embarrass the person you are taking. And the lady is trying to say, my brother, I don't know how to tell you, but please just remove your shoe. My mother is a very neat person. I'm not ready for trouble here. And he said, what is all that? According to what the Bible says, if you enter, he that receives a prophet, and you start bringing all kinds of childish things, and you leave that home and cause trouble for the people. The mother now looks and says, are these the kind of useless pastors that you move around with? Let me not see you with any of them. You must be accommodating, yet not compromising. I will never fight anybody who sustains an ideology that is different from me, including the Muslims. Most of the people, most of the people who have the cars, that's why there are many churches, Muslims hate them because they hate Muslims. Are we together now? No. Terrorism. And, a, and an extremist mindset is not the same. I have met a lot of Muslims that are absolutely nice people. Of course, anybody without the Holy Spirit, there's no guarantee to the person. But I'm telling you, there are people who have been able to sustain certain abilities. One, one of my drivers used to come, his, his, um, he has some three children. I've never seen well-behaved Hausa girls like that. They came to visit me one time during Salah. And after, you know, they brought small food for me to appreciate me and all of that. And then I gave all of them one, one thousand naira. And all of them, in concert, they kept tiny children. Ale Saka the Alheri. Ale Saka the Alheri. I said, my goodness, when was the last time a tongue-talking Christian child? You say, baby, how are you? You say, bring it. And he's even crying. This is what we have trained our children to do. Yet we have the audacity. Listen, the Bible says he sends the sun. He makes the sun to rise on both the evil and the good. The only place where you see love is when an accident happens. Everybody rushes to rescue them because they don't want to care who is who. There are some of you, your destiny help us sustain a paradigm that is different from yours. And if only you could make that adjustment, they can take you from where you are. Maybe the boss, you went to look for a job and you found out that the boss comes from a denomination you hate. And you just turn and say, this is it. See, let me tell you the truth. If you don't change your outlook about the body of Christ, the body of Christ can never be your church alone. I've told you again and again, stop thinking koinonia, think kingdom. Koinonia is only a small fraction of what God is doing. Joshua Selman is only a contributor to the big thing that God is doing. That's why you never see anybody come and stand up here and say, I called upon the God of Joshua Selman. Call upon it, wonderful, but in your room there. Don't come and infect people with an ideology that makes it look like it is just God of Joshua Selman that answers. God of this, God of every true believer answers. If he doesn't answer, you don't know him, you don't know his ways, or he's not your God in the first place. Many men of God are embarrassed. So you go to a place. How many pastors, brothers and sisters, go for meetings and many of them cannot preach because of the presence of certain pastors. They go somewhere, I'm a grace preacher. Now I can't preach because this person believes in deliverance or believes in casting out of devils. Or the person who is preaching deliverance now sees another person who particularly doesn't believe maybe everybody let people listen i want you to know as i say this especially for ministries because i'm speaking apostolically listen listen to me listen to me i want you to know 
that fundamentally the motivation of every true believer is to love Jesus and to serve him truly. This is the common denominator that binds us all. Are we together now? There are people I love passionately who we do not share the same spiritual ideologies. They may not be comfortable with the dimension of the operation of the Holy Spirit in my life. I may not be con comfortable with certain levels of revelation. But it does not, it's not enough reason whatsoever. We crack jokes about other things. Listen, the key to friendship is to concentrate on your similarity, not your differences. When you want to make money, focus on your difference. But when you want to make friends, focus on your similarity. The anger and the bitterness is growing in the church. The enmity is even becoming, have you seen people, we are the members of this church. We are the members of this sect. We are the members of this prayer house. We are the members of this place. And then these ones come. We are the members of this. We are the ones for Apostle Joshua Selman. This one, we are the ones for this and that. These ones, we are Anglican. These ones, we are this. And all of them, and women of God, are destroying the body of Christ because we are raising people who are like political loyalists to a party rather than raising people who are kingdom conscious. Let me tell you what is making if we don't correct this most of our youths for instance who come to meetings like this and taste certain superior levels of the word of god and the power of god some of them go back to their churches and then they don't go back with a heart of love they go back with cynicism and hatred the moment the pastor mounts up the podium they are angry because they are trying to compare what he's saying with what Apostle Joshua Selman says. And they feel this guy, even an usher in Kononia, knows more revelation than this guy. What did you even call your name? If you are doing that, stop it now. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Stop it right now. There is more to a pastor than the ability to preach. Wisdom. Experience. Pain. There are too many things that qualify a man to be a shepherd preaching is only one of them you may differ in ideologies but I want you to know that you must sustain that ability that whether it is Anglican or Catholic or deeper life or cherubim and seraphim or whatever it is the truth is that any true believer that loves the Lord with his heart and professes the name of the Lord Jesus Christ deserves that reception and there are times that to blend you may need to make adjustments even though temporal adjustments you must make the adjustments if i go to minister for instance in maybe all saints and the rest i'll not start um, raising songs like um, shalom shalom no 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 how many of them know that song there i'm going to raise a powerful hymn and you see our mothers lift up their hands and thank God. I will adjust in a way that will open up their spirits to receive what God is saying. Is God giving us wisdom? This has destroyed the body of Christ. Some come and say, I am for Paul. Others come and say, I am for Apollos. Others come and say, I am for Agabus. And we men of God love it. We pride ourselves in all this political thing. There are men of God who never see eyeball to eyeball. They never pick one another's cult. In Nigeria, men of God have sent assassins to other people. No, no. Are you not amazed that whether it's Pastor Chris's crusade or Benny Hinn's crusade or Renhard Bonke's crusade or um, um, Dr. Olukoya's crusade or W.F. Kumui's crusade, you are seeing miracles happen. You are seeing God. At least we know that these people love God and they are serious. You can't say they are fake. Are we together now? It should tell you that if the same God who showers his anointing and grace upon them he knows what he's looking at the exact requirement brothers and sisters let's not forget that it's the same heaven we are going to heaven doesn't have branches so this annoyance and this resentment that we have against one another it should never be that way lord make us instruments of your peace where there is hatred 
Let your love increase, Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Walls of pride and prejudice shall cease when we are your instruments. Never become an object of division in the body of Christ. Don't become the reason why the church becomes divided. Hence, powerless. Don't be the one sowing seeds. The one sitting down to gossip and compare men of God. And compare who has revelation and who has anointing in the meeting. Don't let that devilish thing be part of your life. You must be able to embrace the diversity of the body. God knows the reason why he left every denomination. The full church is what will reveal Christ. Any denomination you kick out will produce an incomplete church. Let me tell you the truth. Those of us who have this religious advocacy to wipe out other denominations and eventually have our denomination stand. No, sir. No, sir. It's deception from the pit of hell. I came from an orthodox background before I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit and I started walking in the power of God and I thank God for that orthodox background because it's what has kept character in me right now I'm sorry to say it, but a lot of Pentecostal charismatics because of our understanding of the kingdom there is a lot of carelessness and imbalance that's why a pastor can be preaching yet he's sleeping around and he says no problem whatever happens is I mean God is a merciful God that foundation they didn't get me filled with the Holy Spirit but they gave me a basis of understanding I remember then in the seminary when when we will have you must your quiet time he was he was now he's, he's now i think he's now uh is he a venerable now i can't I, I don't know what he is right now god bless him forever forever a man who changed my life he wrote a quiet time manual who will recite scriptures every day every day whether you like it or not you must recite scripture your quiet time manual, you must do it. Whether mechanically or religiously, you shall must do it. Because they, they supervise all of those things. I was trained in the Anglican. You never greet somebody standing to look at the person like this. This is how you greet, bowing down. No matter how tall you are. If two of you are fighting outside, three things will happen. One, they will call you and have a brief Bible study. Second, they will weep all of you. The offender and the offendee, the weep both of you. Once they are done, number three, one will kneel down and you pray, lay your hands and pray for him. He will stand up you, you will kneel down and he will pray for you. I'm serious. Case closed. I told you we are raising a, when we start our schools, that's the way we are going to train the people. I tell you, you can bring your children to our school and go to bed because we will train them, weep out flesh, add the things that are God and produce people of character. We don't just want people who are doing well. We want people who are living well. Hallelujah. But right now, what do we have in the body of Christ? I go to minister all the time. And the moment I'm entering, usually there are crowds of people. Everybody looking. Where is he coming? And you see different men of God trying to square their shoulder. Me too. My name is Pastor This. I'm the pastor of this, this revival movement. And I just come and I greet them. Well done, sir. When I come up stage, I start by saying I honor every man, every woman of God. The pastors in this city, we see and we appreciate your contribution to the advancement of the kingdom. And you see all of them squaring up. Now you are talking. You are appreciating us too. And all of a sudden, their heart becomes open to the meeting. People who would never, some of them maybe even talked about me. But just that five minutes, their hearts are open. Listen, listen. People fight you when you try to trivialize their contributions. Never trivialize people's contributions. No matter how little. Don't look at your father and mother one day and say, I've had many people in my life who have, who have built me. I'm happy to say you are one of them. No, they are not one of them. They are your parents. Are we together now? Yeah. People usually fight you when you give them an impression that their contributions are small or worthless. There are ministries I may not really have any much revelation to learn from them. 
but I can learn leadership. I can learn excellence. There are ministries I can learn prayer. Part of the reasons why God has anointed me so much is because my heart is open over the body of Christ. I love the body of Christ genuinely. Take away the hatred you have for certain denominations, certain men of God. You know it, I've told you. I never talk against any man of God. I don't care who. Never. You will never hear it from my mouth. I repented years ago and it will never happen. If I ever mention the name of a man of God is to say something commendable because I myself will stand before the white throne and I will be judged. You're my brother, you're my sister. So take me by your hand. Together we will walk until he comes. There's no what that stands between us. Hallelujah. So it's a major mistake. How much do you love people and are able to accommodate? There are people who are talkatives. They are noisemakers. All they are falling down has not removed it. Don't try to change it. Create an adjustment. Their mouths are like that. You are going to frustrate yourself trying to change it. There are others who are cons it would take you praying and fasting to get good morning out of them. Get used to it. Are we together now? I like this man of God, but I hate his wife. She talks too much. Sorry, she's his wife. She's already married. Accommodate it. She plans to be his wife for all the lifespan of that ministry. So if you plan to be a member in that church, get used to all the erratic attitude. Get to the emotionalism go past it and focus on what God is doing are we together now never hate people for holding reservations don't look at Muslims moving around and the next thing you just look and say I hate these people no you are being devilish that's a Luciferian spirit because God sends he makes the sun to rise on both the evil and the good the bosses that convey you here after koinonia Every time I come out, I look at the people. They are greeting me and I greet them. I was telling protocol the other day. I said, make sure that we buy minerals for them. And we're happy. We crack jokes. We may have differences in faith and belief. And everybody has the responsibility to choose. But there are many other things that bind us. How many neighbors never talk face to face? Because one person is Hare Krishna. One person is... is, is uh, a, a member of this thing and he said I, I would never me enter this house and they bring food for you say carry your food and walk back I know what you did with it no you don't do that why don't you look away from the differences I may not believe in deliverance I may not believe in demons I may not believe in whether uh, trouser or hair or whatever it is I may not believe there is heaven I may not believe there is this, but find a common ground. We are all human beings. Are we together? Never hate people. Listen, you know what hatred is? Hatred is, is a bitter dislike. It's a satanic thing. A bitter dislike. And usually, that hatred comes when people sustain a perspective that is different from yours. There are preachers who when they go to preach and they see that there is an interpreter maybe somebody interpreting in Hausa or interpreting another language they put off their angry no. that's why I love Reinhard Bonke he's gone to almost every African continent with their attitudes I, I watched one of his videos he went to one African country Africans, all students, we know how to disgrace ourselves he went to one African country and before he will settle down, they took coconut and, and then they, 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 they scraped, they created O in the coconut and removed everything and told him to drink the water. And when he was drinking it, they were clapping. I said, is this how to honor a man of God? Don't stretch people beyond their limit. You believe in coconut as a way of welcome. You can keep it and you are stretching the man too much. This guy came all the way from Germany. Why come and put all of that pressure on him? But you notice Reinhard Bonke. If he's going to Lagos, you will see him wear Agbada. And you are wondering, Agbada. Many of our white missionaries do it, right? You see them struggling to tie this thing. Women tie. They can't do it well, but they are doing it anyway. And every time you see that, it blesses you. 
love do you love the body this looks simple but it may be the reason why many of our prayers are not answered because we do not sustain that love for god and for the body of christ these are the contemplations that the lord himself shared with me we have extreme hatred for people who sustain a different perspective we pray in tongues so much, yet there is hatred that is locked up in our mind. We fast so much, yet there is hatred that is locked up in our minds. No. Remember, the Bible says, even faith works by love. Are we together? So I carry that heart of love. I prayed and fasted dry for 10 days. And I carry that attitude of hatred for the body of Christ. And I come and lay my hands on Pastor Femi and the power refuses to move. And you find out that there are few miracles happening in our meetings. I tell you, that's why many men of God have very little miracles and the manifestations of the Spirit. No. Never hate things that are different from your perspective. Don't hate people. Closely related to the subject of hatred, the Lord asked me to talk about this. I don't know why, but He, he put in my heart the issue of temper and anger. Look up. Let me talk about it for five minutes. The Lord began to talk to me. Do you know that what we call temper, you know what I mean? Hot tempered attitude, anger. Do you know it's a spirit? Look up please. Koinonia, are you aware that anger is a spirit? Yeah. How many believers, especially the men, are hot tempered? It's a terrible attitude. When you are involved in any ministry of deliverance, you know that the classic way of identifying the presence of demons in a person is that rage and temper becomes the expression. How many believers and they are going for a meeting and before the meeting, the man beats up his wife, beats her up and then steps into koinonia and is happy and says god is going to move now and you wonder why the power of god does not move you are trying to give a word of knowledge you are just giving nonsense because faith works by love say it after me faith works by love you finish gossiping about a man of god and a family and tearing people down and you stand and you want the glory of god to move around no it does not work like that love Oftentimes you will hear that Jesus was moved with compassion. Listen, if you are a hot-tempered person in this place tonight, if nobody has told you you need help, are we together? I don't care who you are. If you are hot-tempered, humble yourself, you need help. You will never be able to love people when you are hot-tempered. Do you know why? Because people will do things every day that will annoy you. How many days? Every day. Pastors, your wife, your husband, and all of that. It's killing people in the body of Christ. That's where all this revelation of causes and destroying people all of a sudden comes. No. People will offend you. Members will do a lot of childish things, especially if you are a pastor. Anybody who is a pastor or a leader here knows that working with people is a difficult thing because people's ideologies can be very interesting. But do you sustain that ability to be cool and calm? Many marriages are breaking today because of temper, hot temper. The lady hears the man talking about something. Maybe he's talking to his sister. And he says, sweetheart, how are you? And the woman keeps quiet. The man doesn't know what is happening. The next thing he sees um, a knife. She just taps him and says, I didn't mean to do it. But you just killed your husband. As a true Christian, I don't care what degree of tongues you are praying. When you become temperate, the ability to absorb pain and pressure and yet be calm. Listen, especially for we young people, is one big secret of a healthy marriage. Hot-tempered people are dangerous people. They can do anything. See, closely related to that, every time you are angry, let me tell you how to manage it. Keep quiet. Because when you speak in anger, the devil will take hold of your tongue and you will say things you cannot retrieve back. The Bible says the birds can carry your words. 
and take it far beyond your reach. If you are angry at my preaching, leave Koinonia. After all, this is a, and then next Sunday, next week, you come and you find out that all the members are angry. They are going to say, no, no, no. I don't mean that. What is the meaning of that? Can't I at least be angry? No. No. Never justify anger and that hot-tempered attitude. God is speaking to many of us here. Great people. How many of us have been robbed of the opportunity? We have lost friends because of temper. We have lost relationships because of temper. We have lost destiny helpers because of temper. We have lost anointings and graces because of temper. Tonight, God is calling us to love people. Your heart must be very accommodating. Factor it as part of your life that people will annoy you every day. Every day. Hot temper. It's too much in the body of Christ. I watch with shock the way preachers are hot tempered. I've seen men of God talk to their wives in ways I could not believe. A man turns and talks to his wife as if she's a piece of rag. I counseled a case recently. A woman who was thrown away by her husband, a pastor. For two months, she was sleeping outside. Outside doesn't mean another place. Outside, on bare ground. She will carry a wrapper in the night and you will throw, throw her outside. Two months, God is my witness. Yet that man will come to church on Sunday and dance and sing. Who is deceiving who? Temper. How many pastors beat their wives? I mean, beat to matching them and say, I will kill you. How many pastors punish members because of anger? Kneel down, raise your hand as if it's as if it's, it's they paid school fees. They, they, you, you gave them money to come to people innocently come to your church, you punish them and make them look like idiots. All these things we are doing, let me tell you, is very, very bad, and the Lord is not pleased with it. Temper. Say in the name of Jesus, shout it in the name of Jesus. I receive grace to walk on anger. And temper. Yes. You will destroy more people than you know when you are an angry person. Especially for our sisters. Do you know the Bible says it is better to stay on the rooftop of your house than to live with an angry woman? Think about that. That you carry your mattress on your zinc to stay there rather than living with a woman that is contentious and angry. These are the things that short circuit the power of God. So we are fasting. We are praying, but there is temper, there's resentment. Do you know that if I'm angry with Tosin and I hate her, if God gives me a prophetic word for Tosin, that word will be corrupted because that word will rub off on my unrenewed, my angry mind. Especially if what God is telling her is a good thing. Prophesy to her that God will lift her. And I'll now say God will lift you, but God is saying you should mind the way you talk to men of God now. That one is no longer God. Are we together? Men of God and churches are trying to make men like them and not like Jesus. While it is true that when you become a leader, you influence people, you must be sure that the person you are following is following Jesus. Not following a denomination. Not following a geo. Not following a, 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 a priest or pope or whatever. Following Jesus. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Some of you may never appreciate what I'm saying now until you see what these attributes will take out from your life. They will take more. Some of our mothers and people here who are a bit elderly will understand exactly what I'm saying because these little attributes have cheated a lot of people. They have lost opportunities that may never come again save by the mercy of God. People have lost jobs. They entered interview places and, and they tried to make them angry on purpose. I hope you know that. They can make you angry on purpose. Just job interview. You step in and they say, what kind of stupid girl are you? You step in, you can't greet us, you can't do everything. And they say, what the heck? Is it job? And you bounce out and go and continue your suffering. You are the one suffering. Whereas you fail the test. 
I remember one gentleman who was ringing, ringing my phone and he sent me a text. He said, God told me you are my spiritual father. I didn't even answer him. After like three days, he said, why are all men of God like this? I said, look at, look at, look at the person who is stalking. Three days, 72 hours. The same person who is making all that noise. Temper. Anger. I will kill you. We will die in this place. I will remove my Christianity. When I beat you, I will put... No, no, don't remove your Christianity. Leave it there. It's not a garment you take off and put back. Listen, don't come and be a nice Christian in church and then go outside box. There are even believers that fight. You, you know, ba? As in, I mean, I don't mean words, verbal fight, real fight. When they finish, they'll be boiling and they say, remember, Jesus died for you. And they're, they're, don't do that if I have a daughter I would never give a, I, I, my daughter to an angry man I don't care what he has he's a dangerous man men have destroyed children in the womb of women because of anger Temple. this is your house your home we welcome you, Lord, we welcome you. This is your house, your home. We welcome you. God knows from the depth of my heart that I love everybody in Koinonia. I may not know everybody by name, but I love you. You see me greeting people after service. I don't want to know who you are. I don't want to know who your father is, who your mother is. I never treat people and say, you, your father is a senator. You, your mother is, your father is an iron bender. You stand here. You stand here. I don't want to know who is who. I love people genuinely from the depth of my heart. In fact, that's the meaning of my name, the way to love. Do you love people enough to receive the anointing to change them? When I counsel sometimes from morning till night, I am tired and I'm hungry. It's because of love. I think all that I'm, I've taken today is just a drink that I took at the airport. I couldn't even think of saying I'll try to get a meal to eat. Why? Why should I be eating when there are people who are sitting and waiting for the word of God to change them? Why should I say, ah, I, I want to be... No, 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 no. I love you too much. The Bible says a good shepherd lays down not matches on the sheep lays down emoji you want power you are fasted you have prayed i'm showing you the other sides of the equation love i love god's people whenever i shout and quarrel you here there are times that i'm hard on you in my teachings but you can look beyond my teachings and know that i'm communicating from a heart of love I will never open my mouth and speak resentful and hateful words against anybody that God has created. No. no. You know that song? I won't harm you with words from my mouth. I love you. I need you to survive. It is His will that every need be supplied you are important to me I need you to never rejoice at the downfall of others you will never be anointed that way don't celebrate when a man falls are we together now you hear that armed robbers came and robbed the church. You laugh and say, I, I, I knew it. They don't have faith. No. The pain of the body should be your pain. The joy of the body should be your joy. I'm teaching you what we call a corporate life. You must learn to hide your individualism. And let the church rise and be exalted. And sometimes you may need to constrain your honor and allow the body. When people send a lot of miracles, text messages with many things that have happened, sometimes I send it to the workers. You will never hear me use words like my ministry. 
or my church. If you hear me use that, it, it was a slip of tongue or something that just happened because it is never my church. I'm only a steward. It's never my ministry. Before I was born, God was still at work. If, I, if he tarries after, long after I'm gone, I will only be one of many that has brought my contribution. I will never look down on the body of Christ. I will never look down on any man that is made in the image of God. I have seen people who look like nothing and within one, two, three years, God raised them. Some of us were like that. If we were to follow based on the standards of men, some of us would probably not be able to enter some of the places we are entering right now. But God has the ability to see the motif of men's heart. That's why many of us who think we are qualified never receive anything. And there are others who approach God and we say, Lord, if there is any vessel you are looking for, find one in me. I never forget where he's brought me from. I never forget what he's doing in my life. I love him with my life and I love his word and I love the body of Christ. Everyone say after me, I love the body of Christ. I love God's creation. Yes. Do this little thing, brothers and sisters, and you will see doors open. I know many of you will be expecting me to say something great and something charismatic. Never trivialize what I am teaching you right now. Not only will it give you character, it will sustain your open heavens. As a pastor, people never become loyal to you until they discern that you love them. Many pastors hate their members. They only use their members. There was a time I rebuked the protocol department. I said, why did you withdraw security? They said, ah, there is peace and calm. I told them, I said, peace or no peace. Make sure that we have adequate securities at all times. Not just during koinonia, but any activity. Let there be correspondences with security. Because I love God's people too much. God brought these people as a trust. We must be able to take care of them. You don't want to imagine how much we spend every week transporting buses, the chairs and the rest. And the protocol department know they will never meet me once and say, are we not spending too much? It is never too much for the people that God is going to raise to become mighty people. It is never too much. Love. Love. There remained these three. Faith, hope and love. But the Bible says the greatest is love. Let me show you one scripture as we round up. One scripture that has blessed me so, so much. 1 John 4 verse 16. Please media, give us 1 John 4 verse 16. These words came very strong upon my heart. And I pray that it will be strong upon your heart the same way it came upon my heart. Go ahead and read. Let's read together. One to read. And we have known and believed the love that God had to us. Listen, he said God is what? He didn't say God has love. He didn't say God loves. He said God is love. And then, this is what he says. He says, he that dwelleth in love, dwelleth in God and God in him. Not he that prays in tongues. He that dwells in love. Your life becomes like a magnet when the love of Christ is at work in you. Listen, there are people on this earth, when you stand close to them, you literally feel the love of Jesus like a river flowing. You know there is nothing you do that will drive them away from you. They love you. May God make you such a person in the name of Jesus Christ. This is one big secret of the anointing of the Spirit upon my life. Every time I come for Koinonia and I sit down here, I watch the protocol department doing their thing, the ushers doing their thing, and the love of God falls upon my heart for them. As I stand and see the way they are struggling to make sure things work, I never come here morning or afternoon to supervise what they are doing. Sometimes as early as 8 o'clock in the morning, they are already working, doing everything. And I look at them, every worker in Koinonia, they know that I love them with my life. Not just because we, we put dinners for them. I love them with me. I will give my life for the workers. I will. And I mean it with, 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 with no words. 
I will never watch somebody come around me who is hungry. If you know me very well and you are close to me, after greeting you, I ask you, what have you eaten? And you try to say, no, no. I say, what have you eaten? If it is 500 naira that I have, we will share it. Listen, brothers and sisters, when the heart of love is at work in you, power will never be far from you. Never. Never be far from you. God will be able to bring members. God will be able to bring children. God will bring people that you will build. He that dwells in love is very important. It's not enough to pursue anointing. It's not enough to pursue lifting and fame. You must love people. Love overrides prayer. Love overrides fasting. First Corinthians 13. I just feel we should round up here. First Corinthians 13 as we round up. We are going to examine ourselves and our love lives as far as God is concerned. God is doing a circumcision in our hearts tonight. For though I speak with the tongues of men, look up everyone, and the tongues of angels, there is no man alive who has entered this spiritual dimension where you can flow in the tongues of men and the tongues of angels. And the Bible says, even if you get to that realm, it says, and have not love. Can we have a version that says love if there is? It says, I am become as what? A sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. In other words, if I become such a man of God that I can speak both in the tongues of men, right? I am nothing. Verse 2. Let's hurry up, media. Please help us. Verse 2. And if I have prophetic powers, is that not what we are looking for? We are looking for it passionately. Chasing every man of God with handkerchief and, and oil. Somebody met me in a meeting and just he just opened it and said, man of God, breathe on this oil. I mean, I just said, God bless you. It is done. He just closed it. I said, you see the kind of thing we are talking about. If I have prophetic powers, the gift of interpreting the divine will and purpose, he says, and I understand all secret truths. Come on now. This is the realm of Rema. Insights that we are looking for. The Bible says, even if you rise to that point and you possess the mysteries and possess all knowledge, then he says, if I have sufficient faith, no one on earth I know has gotten to that dimension so that you can remove mountains but have not love. The Bible says, I am what? On earth, if I raise 10 wheelchairs, my name will be on poster everywhere. What will they call me? Great man of God. Tomorrow we are going for a crusade, right? And there will be all kinds of miracles in that crusade. I'm sure the people are excited right now. As I was passing, coming, I saw one small poster and I saw my face there. I just nodded my head. And we, and, I mean, we just passed. I, I saw the poster, you know. It's in Barnawa. The crusade is in Barnawa tomorrow. Barnawa for Christ's crusade. And while we were coming, I saw somewhere they just put my face. I said, somebody will see this now and say, ah, this man of God. While they are laughing and clapping, this is what God is saying. He says, if I have all this power to raise wheelchairs and prophesy and teach mysteries, and I have not love... Based on men's standard, I'm a great person. They will give me money. They will sow into my life. They will deceive all these deceitful things that happen. But the Bible says, I am nothing. Empty, zero, useless. Verse 3. Even if I dole out all that I have, I dish out the giving dimension now. Even if I give out everything I have to the poor in providing food and if I surrender my body to be burned or in order that I may glory but I have not love. He says I gain what? Nothing. Do you know what it means to give yourself to die? How many people have we rejoiced and said they died for others? When we get to heaven you will see that their reward may be small for some of them. Love is a big deal to God. Love endures long. Now give us King James. We're ready to be kings. Give us King James. Charity does what? Suffers long. 
The word long suffering, there's the word patience. Now, everywhere as I read on, wherever the word charity is, except your name is charity, I want you to put your name there. Ready? We'll just read it. One, two, read. Joshua Selman suffers long and is kind. Joshua Selman envies not. Read it, you are reading it. Joshua Selman vaunted not itself and is not puffed up. Stop. Is that true about you? Is that true that you are patient? Are you a patient person? Is that true about you that you are kind? Is it true? Of, I know you pray in tongues. I know you are a miracle worker. You are an apostle. You are a prophet. Is it true that you do not envy? Oh, how many believers die in envy? It's not puffed up. You don't lift up yourself trying to show that you are better than others because of whatever privileges you have. Next verse. We're rounding up. It says it does not behave itself unseemingly and then love seeketh not her own. The meaning of that is that you prioritize people and their needs even above yourself. In other words, you are not selfish and self-centered. Is that true? Is that really true about us? Aha, here is the point. It's not easily angered or provoked. Think yet no evil. When was the last time you saw people and you did not think negative about them? To look at a lady and say, this lady looks like a prostitute. What of this lady looks like the kind of vessel God will use? Says, does not think evil. Verse 6. Rejoice not in iniquity. So you see, living in iniquity is also a sign that the love of God is not in you. Because when you love him, you will love to please him. When you love your fellow man, you will not come and destroy your fellow man and do all these kinds of things. But rejoice it in the truth. Seven. It peereth all things. Endurance. There are times that for the sake of the love you have for people, you will endure a lot of things. It believed all things. It hoped all things. It endured all things. Eight. It says love never fails. Everyone say it after me. Love never fails. He says, but whether there be prophecies, they shall what? That means even the prophetic realm has errors and limitations. He says, whether there be tongues, utterances, communications, the Bible says they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, rema, revelation, he says they shall vanish away. Verse 9. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. 10. We are reading down to 13 or 14. But when that which is perfect is come, that which is in part shall be done away with. 11. When I was a child, void of love, I proved it by speaking like a child. I understood like a child and I taught like a child. Tonight's teaching is making us become mature people. It says, now that I am a man, I am matured, I put away what? childish things. That means something about your speaking must change after tonight's meeting. Something about your understanding must change after tonight's meeting. Something about your thought life must change your action. It says, for now we see through a glass. Go to verse 13, please. 13. And now abided what? Hope. Faith. Hope and love. These three. It says, but the greatest is love what is the greatest the greatest brothers and sisters is not building a ministry the greatest is not becoming a man of god the greatest is not becoming a custodian of kingdom mysteries and revelation the greatest is not just having power and anointing no the universal set is love at the end of my life i want this to be said about me that I love God with all my heart. I served him with all my heart. And that I loved humanity with my all and my heart. I don't want no credit to my name that I built houses and bought cars. And um, 
what happened? I traveled abroad. I own jets. I own all those things. Thank God for them. But I sincerely do not want all of these things added because they are all useless. I have learned early in life the vanity of anything that is outside love. When we get to heaven, they are not going to ask how many wheelchairs were raised. They are not going to ask how many suits you wore. They are not going to ask how many Versace you bought. They are not going to ask how many first class flights you entered. All that matters when you stand before him is love. And if the love of God is not found in you, this is scary, but let me tell you the truth. You are going to hell. You are going to hell without the love of God, for sure. So we are going to pray tonight. Very briefly, rise up on your feet. In one minute before we pray, please everyone rise if you can. If you can, please rise inside and outside. I just want you to close your eyes for one minute and reflect on what I've taught tonight. Love. The Bible says God is love and he that dwells in love dwells in God. I want you to reflect in one minute how much the love of God has dried away from your heart and how much your love for the body of Christ has been questionable. I want you to think of how your life has contributed to destroying the life of others if in any way it has. Or the way your life has contributed in destroying churches, ministries, men of God, the body of Christ. Think of how you have brought denominational barriers and destroyed people's faith. Think of how you have castigated pastors and made people not to listen to them. It's time for change. I know you're looking for power. I know you're looking for anointing. I know you're looking for money. You're looking for increase. We all are searching for these things. But I'm showing you the way. God is speaking to us. Some of us here, imagine how many relationships you have destroyed because of lack of love. Imagine people who would have been married now, but because you do not sustain the love of Christ, you destroy best friends. Imagine destinies you have turned around and aborted. Some of you have even made marriages to be divorced. You have made pastors to hate other pastors. You have carried news that are not newsworthy. You have made ministries to fight themselves. If you want to see the glory of God upon your life, the law must be at work. Imagine how many times you have held unforgiveness in your heart against people. Your husband, your wife, your brother, your child, fellow believers. It's time to let go. Lift your voice in one minute and begin to pray and say, Lord, let it go. I release it tonight in the name of Jesus. All the unforgiveness, the bitterness, the hurt, I release it and let it go tonight in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and pray. Please, we are praying very seriously. Talk to the Lord. Say, Lord, never will I be an enemy of the advancement of your kingdom. Never will I be the reason why someone's destiny will be jeopardized. Never will I be the reason why the body of Christ will crumble. I repent of ignorance. I repent of childishness. The Bible calls love the bond of perfectness. That's why I call it the mystery of perfection. This is the ancient mystery that makes men perfect. Mature. Lift your voice and pray and open up your heart before God. Lord, I've fought people who do not agree my, with my Christian perspectives. I've fought men of God and ministries. I've fought people who are gifts from God to me. Who would have changed my life. But I've resented them because of their ideologies. I have hated people of other religions. I have hated people who sustain a different perspective to life than my own. Anybody who is not like me becomes my enemy. I repent tonight in the name of Jesus. Lift your voice and pray. Walk upon my heart. Walk upon my heart. Change my heart. Change my heart. No more hatred. Lift your voice and rebuke the spirit of hatred. It's a spirit. Hatred is a choice. 
you can choose to love and you can choose to hate if there are people you hate and you hold on in your heart i like you to begin to release them right now i release my mother i release my father i release that pastor i release my church i release this denomination i release my wife and my husband hatred is a choice love is a choice hallelujah two more prayer points very quickly we are going to pray against anger and that hot tempered attitude please listen if you are here and you know you are suffering from anger you are not going to come out but i want you to be honest and pray and say lord i'm tired of this thing it's destroying my life it's destroying valuable relationships don't pretend and say i'm a this and that open your mouth and pray temper sisters make sure you pray brothers make sure you pray the bible says do not let the sun go down while you are still angry it says don't give the devil a foothold lift your voice and pray lord i choose to be joyful i choose to be a happy person regardless of circumstances Are you praying tonight? I cause the spirit of anger from my life. I cause the spirit of anger from my life. I cause the spirit of resentment and cynicism and unforgiveness and bitterness and hatred. I cause the spirit of anger, that hot tempered attitude that hurts others, whether with words or actions or thoughts. Pray it out of your life. Pray it out of your life. I'm a changed person tonight. I make up my mind for change. I make up my mind for change. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I want my life to host the glory of God. I want to be a genuine career of His power and His glory. And I lay aside the weight and the encumbrances that rob me from carrying the glory of God. hallelujah last prayer point let's hold hands all over this building hold the hands of someone i'd like you to pray for yourself and pray for koinonia passionately from your heart lift up your voice and say lord like a mantle may your love come upon everyone and upon the house go ahead and pray lord a baptism of love in every department among the leaders among the executives pray for love pray for me pray for love let the love of god that bond of perfectness be at work in my brother and my sister now pray for the person whose hands you are holding pray you don't need to know them you don't need to know their tribe you don't need to know where they are coming from there's one thing that binds us all together that we love the lord some of them may be struggling in sin but pray for them you love them some of them may be wounded soldiers they may have made mistakes they may have messed up in different areas but you must pray for love pray for your family members many of them may not deserve your love but i like you to pray and say lord the love of god in my heart the love of god across my neighbor hallelujah hallelujah please hold hands we're praying i won't harm you with words from my mouth i love you i need you to it is his will that every need be supplied
never make your life from today never make your life an accommodation never make your life an accommodation for hatred and bitterness anybody that comes into your life and is trying to sow the seed of bitterness drive them far from your life don't anybody that comes and is gossiping about drive them far i never allow these kinds of environments because when the love of god is perfect then you'll find out that sickness will leave you for as long as those things are there sickness can hold on to you failure can hold on to you jesus said satan cometh to me and does not find anything many of us we keep getting sick and sick we keep getting oppressed because when satan looks at you there's something in your life that looks like him but when love is perfected in you believe me believe me you conquer death when love is perfected you conquer sickness when love is perfected you conquer failure when love is perfected you conquer limitation when love is perfected your health is preserved there's no stress there's no there's no blood disease as a result of any stress you live a very happy life by choice a happy life by choice hallelujah before i pray for us very quickly still holding hands there are people here tonight you've heard me teach on love and there are many of us the lord is talking to you and first and foremost you've not even established your love for jesus christ you may be a christian you may be inside outside maybe you once fell in love with god but for some reason you have derailed you know you have derailed and there are people who have never made that decision every time you hear preachers making an altar call like this you scorn them you think they are wasting their time the lord jesus is giving you a chance tonight wherever you are please i'd like you to leave that hand of your neighbor and make your way to the front we have just one or two minutes for this wherever you are make your way to the front right now god bless you people are coming celebrate them outside inside god bless you it's time to receive the greatest love god bless you and there are people who have done a lot of things in their lives and they are asking can god take me back i want you to know that God will take you the way you are and change you. Make your way to the front. We don't care what you have done or not done. Jesus said, he who has no sin should first cast the stone. Make your way to the front. Two minutes, please. God bless you. Jesus said, if you are ashamed of me before men, I will be ashamed of you before my father. Let this be a new beginning. Win that war in your heart tonight win that war over destiny tonight god bless you make way for them hallelujah thank you so much ladies and gentlemen for coming out we love you everybody at one time or the other has had to make this decision god bless you my dear join them bless you my brother if you're still thinking about it just rush out quickly i want to lead you to this prayer some of you are crying don't be ashamed it's a decision that will change your life. Lift your right hand. And I want you to say this after me from the depth of your heart. You're not reciting a poem. Let this be. I want you to know that Jesus is in this place. Say, Lord Jesus, I've heard your word tonight. And I declare that I love you with all my heart. I ask you to forgive me. I've lived my life the way I want now I hand over that life to you. Take that life and use it for your glory. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I declare that from today, I'm a changed person. My past is gone. My past is over. A fresh start begins for me today. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now keep those hands lifted as I pray for you, Father. You brought these ones to change them and bless them and we thank you. Some of them have gone through things we cannot imagine. I pray that tonight will be a fresh start for them. Some of them are giving their lives to Jesus for the first time. Others are rededicating their lives. May they never go back to their lifestyles again. Give them a new lifestyle in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you that God will make you mighty men and women. I pray that you will be completely changed from today, forward ever and backward never. I bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Please follow the gentleman waving his hands.
Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.